Okay, guys, we are live! Uh, so for those listening at home, welcome to the Dungeon Musings YouTube channel. My name is Kevin Madison, and I'll be your friendly referee today, because today we are kicking off actually playing uh, Mongoose uh, Publishing's second edition Traveler science fiction role-playing game. And uh, we are playing through, uh, or will be playing through, one of their uh, pre-written modules, the Reach Adventure 5, the Borderland Run. And uh, with me today are the stars of the uh, Borderland Run campaign. Um, I'll go the order I've got you guys on the screen here, which tells us who you are and who your traveler is. Because uh, we have learned a great deal about them in the last little bit. Uh, first up, we've got Jeffrey. Hey everybody. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm Jeff, and I'm playing Alonzo Santoro. He is a former journalist and currently a writer. And he's looking to head off on an adventure with some... Uh, Spacefaring, I don't know, adventure seekers, hopefully. Nice. Hopefully we're not just moving cargo around. That would be boring. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next up is David. Hi, everyone. I'm David, and I'll be playing Dr. Elias Abdel, a uh, doctor and medical researcher who has left the lab behind to explore hands-on science in the field, but nice. has no experience in the field, so we'll see how that goes. Very nice. <laughs> uh, next up is Carl. Hello, I'm Carl, and I'm playing Anchor Guvel. He is a Barger ex-Imperial Navy rating, um, and it should be really cool. I, I really enjoyed how we kind of, on the Discord and here live, we've been putting our characters and our the relationships together, so I'm looking forward to this. Nice. Uh, next up is Graham. Hi, I'm Graham. I'm playing Dane Lovrick, uh, a young man who dreamed of exploring the stars and ended up being a Black Ops Imperial Marine. He was crushed, but he's now with these fine fellows and looking to explore the stars once more. Nice. And last but certainly not least is our Captain James. All right, I'm playing uh, Captain Ghani, and he's an ex-Imperial Navy, then... Ex um, asteroid miner, then ex imperial scout, and then finally a fairly successful uh, free trader. Nice. And he's he's uh, with uh, Doctor Abel Abdel. Uh, we've owned this far uh, far trader, which uh, we are now all the crew of. Nice. Uh, now, James is not being bashful today. Uh, for those who may be joining us live, I apologize for the late start. Uh, we've spent the, almost the last hour wrestling with Roll20 has pushed through an update that has completely fucked their cameras. Uh, so it took us almost an hour to sort out a workaround for this, and we still don't have our entire crew. So I do apologize for that. I apologize for the pink in the upper corner of everyone's image as well. Lay the blame fully at Roll20's feet for uh, a non-functioning product for today. So, um, but with that said, let's uh, kick off this campaign properly. I mentioned to the guys uh, that I actually have a set of dice that I got from the um, Kickstarter for Deep Night Horizon that I still have yet to open. Their official TAS dice. So, I got my uh, utility knife here. I'm opening these up, guys. Uh, these will be used for the purpose of this campaign. Hmm. And there we go. All right. They are. Ooh, and they got the TAS on them too, just like uh, Carl's hat. Come on. Come on. <laughs> so, for those less familiar with uh, Traveler, what is TAS? It is a Traveler's Aid Society. And several of our Starship crew are members of the Traveler's Aid Society. It's like a. It's kind of like, you know, if you do. I guess it's a reward for service uh, to yeah, the like Imperium. Triple A for, uh, yeah. for Starfarers. <laughs> kind yeah. of triple A, but kind of like, you know, like United uh, Flight Club, you know, or American Airlines Flight Club. Yeah. Like you get, you get, but you get better perks than those you ever would. You get like a first class passengers and you can hang out in the TAS lounge at Starports. You know, when well, there's also like it's kind of um, uh, this may not be a direct parallel, but it's like the um, African American travel guides uh, that you'd have in the uh, like the between the early early part of the 20th century through to the um, uh, about the 70s or 80s, uh, where there would be like a motor, they would be tell you like this town, you know, don't stop in this town, don't gas up in this town, or like this place is a good place and is welcome to and safe to, to stay. 
it sort of incorporates some of that as well, where it's yeah, um, there's also some cool. insight into what uh, you know what to expect from different uh, places. Uh, so for uh, those. Um, uh, listening at home who were not part of our, our Discord conversation, maybe what I thought we'd do is start just with a little bit of background. We don't need to go into huge detail for it, but just get a little sense of how everyone knows one another, and then we'll jump into the actual adventure itself. So what are some of the, uh, for you, the players, what are the meaningful or significant connections in your past history or whatnot that uh, you have found over the past two weeks? You guys can go in whatever order you like. All right, I guess I'm going to go since I'm it's at the top of my head right now. So Anchor, so he has I mean, he's I feel like he's met uh, Ghani and Dane throughout his career, uh, uh, but definitely like a non-military meaningful relationship with, with Alonzo Santoro, a journalist of note. And for whatever reason, I kept rolling like uh, like I kept rolling my event during character creation. It really <laughs> yeah. to it totally worked out that he throughout his imperial naval career anchor has been unraveling some sort of conspiracy starting with with uh you know uh i guess uh reappropriation of funds and corruption to mutiny to trying to sabotage imperial ships and finally to this big conspiracy so early in his career when this was first starting he met up with alonzo and and you know kind of shared his conspiracy theories but the probably, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. It's up to Alonzo if he decided that they were valid or not. But that's how he, he definitely met this uh, this high uh, high profile journalist. Um, and then with um, de uh, with the interaction with through the Imperial Navy, the most significant was with uh, I decided was with, with uh, Dane Lalbrick and the Imperial. He, you know, so the, so Anchor is a uh, he's kind of he can pilot, but he's not quite. He's not an officer, so he'd be like kind of like a. He could be in special ops, but not driving the main ship, but he could definitely drive like ship's boats. And perhaps he was associated with Dane Lawbrick's black ops crew at some point in his career and was like the pilot, got to interact with these Marines and, and learn some fighting skills. So, so that's a- uh... Nice. Okay. Well, I might as well go next because you mentioned our relationship. Um, yeah, I don't know if he fully believes, Alonzo fully believes your full conspiracy, but definitely parts of it were true because we followed up on that and uh, I actually took down a corrupt uh, politician on my home world uh, using some of that information that you had provided. So at least some of it holds water and I think he uh, at least entertains the idea. Maybe he's got he's kind of hopeful that you're right because you know undercover uncovering this huge conspiracy and uh, being a part of taking it down would definitely be the kind of stuff he's looking for for his novel. So, you know, he definitely entertains it. Uh, whether he you know thinks it's all true, he's not 100% sure. And as far as the other guys, I don't I don't know if I created if we created any more connections that I remember. Yeah, I think, yeah. Um... I, I might have heard of some of, uh, you know, some of your exploits because I definitely, you know, followed and as a journalist, follow the news and follow what's going on in the sector and oh, some know. of these background stuff that you guys have as far as uh, big you might news. Have been, you what might have what been would have been big news, I would have definitely read about it and kind of know who you are a so little that's, bit. That's actually that. a good opportunity to talk about um, long, like w one of the sort of assumptions about technology in Traveler is that uh, it's kind of like Pony Express, um, where news travels at the speed of ships. So right. ships can only, um, you know, you only really learn the news. And remember that uh, traveling between parsecs takes usually about a week. So news from another... Uh, parsec, like one hex over, it, or maybe two or three if it's a more advanced jump engine, it's going to be minimum one week old. And more often than not, it might even be older than that. Uh, right. That is, I mentioned that as well, because that is one of the, like, it's a very poor paying thing, but if you can't find any other kind of work and you need to get stuff on, you can do a mail ship run. Mm. So, um, that's when I would choose I to see. used to be a uh, courier as well. I used to oh, fly yeah. the jump six. Oh, uh, so maybe, I, maybe that is how we met. As if yeah, I'm waiting be. for the news all the time, you know, and I'm into that, reading the news from other sectors, you know, meeting with the actual courier to get the news as fresh as you can might be a way that we met. So let's talk about well, quickly uh, nomenclature as well. 
uh, for this because uh, sector, subsector, parsec, I'm, I'm throwing around a bunch of things here. I'm bringing you over to the map for the Trojan Reach sector. Nice. Each sector is made up of, uh, I can't remember, 12 subsectors? 16 subsectors? 16. 16 subsectors. Uh, each of the hexes is one parsec. And going from one to another, whatever your jump rating of your ship is, that tells you how many parsecs you can actually go. Um, yeah, me as well. The, the tra traveler maps are fucking awesome. Um, the uh, where you most of the, the, the characters that we've talked about thus far are from is somewhere in the edge here of the third imperium. I know that Dane is from Alba here. Yep. Uh, the places where we were talking about the other characters being from were around here, and then there was um, where is that? Uh, do, 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 the yeah, one uh, anchor is from Darshona, which is like here. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And I'm a little bit down from there as well. I'm okay. in Ardasi, which is about five down and one to the left. Excellent. And then oh, let nice. me look at. Where did I say there was that pharaoh? That was... Simok. Uh, so of which? Simok. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Yeah, 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 right. Yeah. Great. So this is, to give you an idea just of how far you've come, where our uh, adventure will be taking, our start and kicking off is on Spurl, way down here, uh, on the edge of kind of, in, it's called Borderland because the adjoining sector is pretty much empty space. <laughs> And one of the troubles, uh, one of the limitations for travel in uh, Traveler is that uh, you need to be able to refuel. Like, uh, unless you can bring extra tanks with you to do a second uh, jump, but like, if you don't have enough stuff for, say, the ship that you have, if you ha <coughs> carried a secondary, like, a, a secondary set of fuel, you could go a maximum of four hexes. So, like, crossing the distance here, unless you've got a really advanced jump drive, you're just not going to be able to do that. You have to sort of work around where you're going. And then you also have to, you know, if you have, if you have, your uh, ship has access to a fuel scoop, you can try and dip down into the atmosphere of a gas giant, refuel that way, and then make your next jump uh, after it's been processed properly. But uh, otherwise, if you don't have that, you need to jump to a place where you can fuel up, where there's, there's a starport. So, uh, to give you guys an idea, like you all sort of grew up here on the edge and the, the third Imperium, to give you a sense, looking down at the bottom of the screen, there is the actual Imperium map. And let me move this up just a scooch. I moved it too far down. But you can give an idea of just how, oh no, I, I did, yeah, never mind. There's just not that much more of a map. Um, right down here, this is the Imperium in general. It's a huge sprawling interstellar empire. And this teeny tiny little box here, that's where we're looking. And the red area of the map, that's this tiny little slice of the Imperium that has any kind of uh, authority over the reach. And this is frontier space as well. So it, although it is under Imperial control, this is borderlands. This is on the edge of, of kind of, you know, civilization. The name that's, that is sort of given to the Trojan Reach, uh, one of the nicknames for it is the Graveyard of Empires. Uh, the reason being is 2,500 years ago, uh, a very advanced uh, uh, empire called the Empire of Sindal uh, collapsed. And uh, that's uh, about a 1,500 years after, no, about 400 years after that is when, see where the yellow is? That is where the Aslan Hirat. That is one of the, um, uh, the rival interstellar empires. They pushed into this area there's also an Aslan Empire called the Glorious Empire, or a um, organization. They are space slavers. Uh, they are very angry cat people who like enslaving humans uh, to, yeah. Uh, there was a successor empire called uh, Drinax that tried to sort of be a, a shadow of what the Empire of Sindal did, uh, but they were bombed into the Stone Age by the uh, Aslan about 200 years, 300 years before the start of our campaign. 
Uh, Drinax still has, you've heard, a glorious flying city, an incredibly advanced uh, piece of technology uh, that has treasures from all across the Sindalan Empire left over in its in the palace of its king, King Oleb IV. But uh, otherwise, there is no authority in here. The best that you can get is the... Uh, corporations, uh, in particular the uh, General Development Corporation, the GDICO, uh, which you will see the logo for GDICO on many, many things over the course of our game. Here we go. And uh, if you don't have, here we go, guys, there is this one? the logo. Oh, yeah. Uh, if you don't have... Oh, because you're refreshed too, Carl. I think your audio may have came back on too. Um, yeah. The... Um, oh, in uh, Roll20 is what I mean, uh, Carl. I got you muted. I got you covered. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Jeff, uh, the reason I I want, you gave us the, the uh, open door to be able to talk about the... Yeah, of course. ...nomenclature for sector, subsector, and to give you guys a sense of where you are... You guys are in the middle of nowhere, which also means there's plenty of opportunity uh, in this region, but uh, it also means there's nobody coming to, to kind of protect you in the event that, uh, you know, things go south. So I interrupted that to give uh, that little bit of background info dump, Jeff. What else were you saying? Oh, that was it, sort of. Just I just saw that, like, I may have... Um, <clears throat> met Captain Guinea Ganny a long time ago when he was a courier. Uh, but that's it. That was the end of my... Okay. The only thing I'd like to add... Well, I'll, I'll add it after we're done this little character thing. Okay. Well, you can go ahead, Jeff. What do you, what do you guys say? Well, I was just going to say that I have some credits left over, and um, I think that he's interested in purchasing some uh, cargo. Uh, he, he said he didn't want to just yep. move cargo around, but he, is, <laughs> he would like to purchase some cargo to move around. So here's the thing. Hey. I really don't care for work all that much, but I do like the money that comes with it. So. Yeah, exactly. I know it's boring, I suppose. but... <laughs> <laughs> well, that is wonderful to hear because we are going to be starting. We're like our um, uh, Kingmaker campaign. We're going to slowly. We're going to do a little bit of uh, a session or two of kind of getting our our sea or space legs, as it were, and then kind of launch into the adventure itself to get to know these characters and how they interact. Uh, who wants to go next? I, I can. Um, Dane Lovrick. Um, yeah. Uh, uh... Anka, um, we, we've known each other for quite some time. We've uh, on and off. And what Anka's provided really is targeting solutions. I mean, the way he puts it is conspiracies, you know, all possibilities. We don't deal in possibilities in the Imperial Marines. We deal in terminal solutions. We get orders and we execute them. And we did several times. Um, sometimes the targets weren't the right ones, but, you know, uh, it was an order. And so we, we carried it out. So <coughs> I've got a lot to be grateful for in a way. Um, and also... Um, in a similar guise, and it's, uh, sadly they've only seen me perhaps at, at my worst, but you know, what the hell. Uh, Dr. Uh, Abdel, um, there was a, definitely a, um, yeah, there was some uh, industrial uh, um, complex uh, issue which had to be resolved. And we, we, we got a, a, a solid tip off from Dr. Abdel about that. And we, we worked together on that. Yeah, so. and that was a, a pretty, that was a pretty thorny one as well. Um, one of the most interesting, one of the things I, I do love about this too is uh, it reminds me a lot of the old Greyhawk grass, uh, ga uh, Gazetteer, the box set, where they give you little blurbs about a, about a nation and then you can just make up whatever the fuck you want, but it had interesting little tidbits. This similar thing for this, like the, I used uh, a content from the Borderland run, but also from the, um, where is it here? Trojan Reach uh, setting book, because that came with, I don't know where the heck it is. Oh, it's in front of me. Boom, with the Pirates of Drenax campaign. It's got a bunch of little bits of information. And one of the uh, worlds that we found in there was this neat, this uh, a low relatively low-tech world that had nuclear weapons, but ha was ruled by a genetically engineered pharaoh. Uh, and it turns out that some of the, <laughs> the uh, pharaohs, uh, some nobles didn't like something that was going on with the, the pharaoh. So he marched his armies out and they responded by using nuclear weapons on his army. Uh, it turns out there's very little defense with, uh, you know, um, motorized uh, infantry <laughs> when you're using nuclear weapons. 
there are uh, corporate interests. There are uh, rival, uh, you know, there were rival interests on the planet um, in, in different factions and a lot of resources at play. It was an amber controlled world. So it required a very delicate solution and a very careful application of some horrific levels of violence in uh, some cases. That would have been, I believe, the last time that Dane was involved with something. And uh, Dr. Ilias, I believe you had an involvement with that as well. Uh, yes, so Dr. Ilias grew up on Tobia, uh, quite sheltered upbringing, then went to university, uh, became a doctor, became a researcher, still very sheltered. Uh, and then this problem of the uh, future of, of the, the Pharaoh's line came up and, and the, the research corporation he's working for decided to, to throw some money at it. And uh, as a geneticist and doctor, he felt quite compelled. So you might have been interviewed by Alonzo, just about the research in general or, or, or something to do with, with, with medicine. But then also had to learn that he, the corporation he works for does have its fingers in many different pies involving bioweapons and other sort of uh, industrial military complex issues, hence how he met Dane and uh, had his eyes open to that some of his research while he wants to use it for good can be used for less good goals uh, and then one of his rivals scuppered his his attempts at saving the problem or, or saving the pharaoh's line or, or addressing the problem so he decided that maybe he needs to get out of this and then <laughs> got his lab ship as part of his benefits but then having had no experience of the real world having been in labs and so quite sheltered all of his life almost instantly ran into trouble but thankfully captain ghani was there to 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 save the day mm. and then he sort of decided well my lab ship and your ship if we trade them in for something bigger and better and get as a crew maybe we can be more independent and you know go and have adventures and opportunities together I, we didn't quite say it, uh, but I think that Anchor may have been involved. He had so many conspiracies yeah. that he was involved yeah, possibly, with over yeah. time. <laughs> Perhaps Anchor, like you were involved in that last one as well, like from the the, um, the like this the off planet side. Dane mm -hmm. may have been involved with more of the hands on stuff, and Doctor Ilias was involved in the because I, I for uh, like I we don't need to necessarily go into the particulars about it, but I kind of foresee it as being this like military strategist involved, and there's you know different corporate rival corporate interests involved, squabbling you know uh, genetic engineered um, uh, noble families who are involved because you know it's more it's more than just having like the blood of kings like the tailored you know TL 13 Superman or woman or person who is ruling the Pharaoh your genetic line gets to then become you know not chosen by God but chosen by science uh, and then would have likely the um, you know I mean maybe this is what uh, happened dr. Ilias is that the intention was uh, was to uh, falsely engineer a genetic flaw that would require persisting treatments that are only available at TL13, like a poison pill clause. Like, well, mm -hmm. you know, if, if you don't, literally in this case, if you don't work with us, then I guess we're just, your line's going to, you know, squash yeah. out or whatever. Um, and that perhaps may have been your breaking point. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, <laughs> so we got Ganny. <laughs> we don't get to see you, James. We do get to see your character today. So do we have like some sort of investigation board on the ship somewhere that we're... Yeah, Carl, you saw what I could do with one city in Paradar. I have an entire sector to go with now. So <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> Um, sorry, so I interrupted there. Uh, uh, Ganny, or Captain Ganny, you have shared some uh, a bunch of uh, great uh, background for your character uh, earlier today. You've uh, give some ways to link in Captain Ganny with some of these others. Yep. So, at, uh, you know, he was twelve years in the navy and uh, a sub lieutenant in there, and his last mission was, uh, I believe, involved Anchor and Dane Lovrick as well on some special ops mission that. I uh, went tits up and uh, Ganny and Lovric were uh, manning the turrets actually on the ship and managed to more or less retrieve the mission but I still t Captain Ganny still took the blame he didn't have the right connections he's not from the smartest background so uh, he got kicked out and then the rest of his career went on and r fairly recently while well, being a uh, merchant on a far trader he uh, ran into uh, dr abdel when dr abdel's lab ship got into difficulties and 
the ship that uh, Captain Ganny was on was able to uh, come and restart his jump engines, and that's where the two of them met when Ghani, who's an engineering officer, was uh, able to get the engine sorted out in time before uh, the lab ship got into deep trouble. And as we've heard, you know, he's had connections in a previous role uh, with Alonso Santoro through uh, his fairly brief career as a uh, ex-boat pilot. Mm -hmm. So he's actually got connections with everybody Mm -hmm. from his past. I think one of the things, um, well, we I didn't uh, emphasize this last time, but uh, psionics are technically illegal in the Imperium. There, there are uh, two places I believe that are, are approved for uh, for psionic training, um, but otherwise it's illegal. Uh, in part because of their rivalry with the um, Zodani. Um, but we don't have to worry about that. Who's who's got psionics around here, Kev? No, the reason sorry. being is that I think that that may have been uh, perhaps um, you, the, the impetus. Um, others may question, like, well, why the fuck is this writer suddenly ha- you know, keen on leaving the Imperium and traveling with a bunch of travelers, like, you know, just working on his novel? Uh, <laughs> the real may, impetus may very well be that you don't want to be imprisoned, you know, because, uh, I mean, you can almost read the headline yourself. That this, you know, person who's uncovered all these things has been a secret psychic the whole time. Yeah. Uh, like that Giordani would make... spy. Oh yeah. So that would very well make the um your all of your enemies that you made over the course of your long career. Uh they not only would it it's almost like um, you know, finding uh like a corrupt forensic, you know, person or corrupt detective where you're like, well shit, now this casts a, a pall over everything they've done before. Uh, and in this case, a lot of the stuff that you uh, uncovered, you know, with the because psionics is not a common thing, they could f- say easily uh, argue that, well, he influenced me to say or do or whatever else. The only reason I, that this stuff happened and I did this thing is because of him. He's the one to blame for what I did that was wrong. And then right. suddenly all those shitty politicians and stuff that you helped uncover and put away, they have a second life and uh, are cast as heroes being targeted by, you know, dirty Zodani spies. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want that to happen. <laughs> he, starts like, he starts out like, oh, it's me great. I'll go and write my novel, but I also need to be a traitor because I have no money. And also I'm on the run because I'm an illegal psychic. And also because... <laughs> <laughs> my cover story is really good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Everyone else's life seems to have gone to pot, but you seem to be doing okay. So what is it yeah. we don't know about you? <laughs> All right. So then anything else to add, guys, before we uh, we dive into the actual adventure? Oh, we need a name for your ship. We know that you guys have uh, a very... Uh, I won't share the... What do you call it? The um, particulars of your... Uh, we put that on Discord, but we've got your the financing of your ship set up. But you have a far trader. Uh, at present, unmodified, but you guys will certainly be free to customize this ship as you go. Um, Good question, because mm-hmm. uh, I think we turned in my, you know, my bit of the ship and also the pinnace, I guess. And yep. Did we keep the grab card or did that get... The grab card did not get sold, no. Like, the only thing I did is I took all the uh, ship shares, I took the value of the, like, what, what you guys would have had uh, in, the, in the value of the two other ships that you rolled, and then just lumped all of that together into the, to figure out what... How much of your ship you would have, your current ship you would have had paid down, and they give you two options for one of them is like paying out over forty years, and the other one is just paying off the tail end of your of your current mortgage, which I it, it paid off fairly soon too. It's not it's not that long, relatively speaking. Yeah, and you included the ship's boat as well. Uh, yes, I think that one I sold. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, no, because uh, we don't need it. If we've got the farm yeah. trader, we don't need it. Yeah. Okay, but we've got the grab card, which we can use. Uh, yes. And you guys have, all... what is it, the... the sh- So we need a name for the ship. We were joking at the end of calling it the Fang Dragon, yeah. but you guys can certainly uh, <laughs> give a name to the ship as well. Uh, and... I don't know. I see if there are any dragons and traveler. That could be fun. Uh, I mean, it, there there is at least one of your uh, characters who has a strong connection to old uh, Earth culture. Yeah. 
Mm. But I just don't see that I would have helped made the ship. Too, uh, there are uh, the Soleimani. Uh, like I was reading about that in the uh, Trojan Reach, there is a pretty substantial Soleimani presence. Yeah. So like the yeah, uh, the, the connection, uh, Jeff and David, who don't, I think you're the guys who don't know that much about the traveler background. Um, there were two kinds of humans who evolved par in parallel uh, because an ancient species picked up some and put them in, in another place. So there was the, what is it, the Soleimani, and what's the other one? The Villani? The Villani. Yeah. Villani. And so, in the Giordani, too. I thought the Giordani. The oh, maybe there is. Yeah, from... yeah. And there's a, there's another one, the Florian. And a, lot, a bunch of there's a bunch of others. That yeah, because like the Florian League is, I believe, another of those like transplanted human species. But two main ones, the Valani had a much older like empire, and then the Solomani uh, fought a war against them. The ones from the humans from Earth, and surprisingly ended up triumphing, and then taking over the uh, the Valani Empire, which then collapsed. Uh, and then we're into the third Imperium now because it is. Uh, a resurgent for it, but there are two very distinctive human, uh, at least uh, I should say, two major distinctive human um, interstellar cultures. One of them is the Soleimani, uh, and the other one is the Villani. And Gani, like Gani's got that kind of weird sci fi name because he is from the Villani. Also, there's uplifted monkeys in this uh, game, so that's. Uh... It's not humans? <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> the Titanic. Nothing. <laughs> nothing ill uh, omened about that. Um, I'll leave for you guys to decide. We don't need to know the name uh, for right now. We just need to know, you know, maybe by next session, uh, what um, uh, what it's going to be called. Um, Rift Wanderer. That's an interesting one too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Less ill opened than the Titanic. <laughs> okay. I think um, I think Dane won't be able to help himself. He'll probably be wandering around the ship, going, "Is this it? I mean, where's the armored bulkheads? Where's the where's the uh, really? Uh, I, what what do you mean there are no there are no weapons? What, <laughs> yeah, what, where are the guns? What? He's we just have, he's just wandering have, around, looking. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> We definitely could use some. Hard, we have, we have like the space to make put weapons. We don't have any weapons on it now. No. no. Okay. He'll just he'll just sit down morosely. I think in a corner. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so anything else? I we like can... Rift Wander sounds good. Actually, we're on the edge of the rift, right? So yeah, mm -hmm. yeah it's quite nice. Okay. All right. So I believe we have a name for your ship. You guys go ahead and rename your uh, handout. Uh, and then let's see here. I'm going to add a handout here for crew notes. Let me see here. I believe I've got a handout here. Uh, oh, crew log. What am I talking about? Come on, Madison. Low hanging fruit right there. Jeez. Where is it here? It's funny. I don't even see any hard points on it. That's kind of unusual. Crew log. There we go. Oh, there you go, guys. And let me uh, just edit it so you've got, you can edit that thing. So if you want to keep track of any notes or such, you can put that in there. And then why don't we have cargo as a separate thing as well? And you can include all your stuff in there. And that one we'll use, let's see here. Uh, 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 uh. Why don't we use, uh, yeah, da, 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 da. Where is it? I'm trying to find the. Yeah, there it is. Ship cargo. There we go, and you should all be able to edit that as well. If you need any other handouts, let me know, and I'll, I'll uh, add them into the game. But those are sort of the bare minimums for most games we need. Um, then, um, if there's nothing else, guys, then. Our campaign will be kicking off about, uh, two, I'm trying to tell Amanda, um, about three months after you have taken control of the Rift Wanderer, after you've all come together. Um, in the film version of our campaign, we would open up with a shot of this beautiful blue world 
almost entirely blue. In fact, you can see there's very little land masses on there. And in, as is customary for, you know, sci-fi films, we'd see in white lettering that goes across as if it's being typed in a, uh, you know, Apple IIe monitor, Parsec 2824, the Borderlands subsector, the Trojan Reach sector, planet Spurl, S-P-E-R-L-E. -E. Our camera would then pan down to the surface of Spurl. Let me grab your tokens, guys, so you've got yourselves over here. I don't think we're tracking anything on them just yet, but... Boom. Now, let me tell you a little bit about Spurl. So, so, oh, I should go to the... And this is reading directly from the Trojan Reach guide that all of you have access to. Um, and it is... It's here, Borderland uh, 185. So, Spurl. This planet is best known for the practice of hunting, and maybe we see, like, in the film version, this would be, like, the uh, TAS travel guide. Spurl. The planet is best known for the practice of hunting titanic amoeba colonies called Spurl whales, which can be processed into valuable biochemicals. The General Development Corporation, GDECO, uh, invested in Spurl whale processing factories and now exert almost total control over the government. Spurl is a TL7 uh, planet, which means that uh, the tech level is a little, it's a, it's a little ways between like where we are in present day Earth and about the 1990s. So you can picture that kind of like late 90s, early 2000s level of tech. For everywhere outside of the starport, there is a uh, starport in uh, orbit that is a really impressive one. It's a class B starport run by GDECO. GDECO, for all your industrial needs. Um, and they, uh, on the surface, um, there is the, mostly the, the processing facilities, but there is the same level of technology. But as soon as you get away from here, there are a ton, there's very limited landmass on Spurl. So, uh, either there are floating arcologies that are kind of built, or there are things that are built like on the, the, um, fairly shallow seabed, uh, or there are, you know, people who just make their living on the seas. One of the upsides with uh, this being a water world is that uh, there was not an awful lot of life here beforehand. Uh, so it's almost entirely imported species, which means that there are relatively few uh, dangerous um, predators uh, on this planet. Now, I recall from our character creation session that Anchor uh, came from a water world originally as well. And the, um, the Spurl what do they call it here? The surface port? Uh, oh, Spurl Downport. Spurl Downport uh, is actually fairly popular as a vacation destination because it's a really nice place. Uh, the place is quite rich. Uh, so there are, while the surface itself may not be particularly well developed and it's not a, a very advanced uh, civilized, a, a very advanced uh, planet, and it is firmly under the thumb of Judico. Judico for all your you know civil suppression needs. Um, <laughs> they um, they do run. A, it's a very safe place to vacation or relax or otherwise. So and because people are are coming and happy to do so, it means there's lots of opportunities in that spaceport to pick up gear, pick up supplies, to make deals and or to you know get the scuttlebutt of what's going on in the um, I think it's called the, the Borderland Arm. Um, one of the ways that, uh, is it the, well, then, well whatever it is, the, the arm that, um, uh, uh, oh, Void's Edge Cluster, that's what it's called. Uh, the Void's Edge Cluster is just this bundle, let me bring you over here, guys. The, uh, in, they're not this, quite the same thing as geographic uh, distinctions, but in Traveler, uh, space travelers have given names to different, or the people who live on them give names to different kind of easier places that you can move around in. This is known as the Void's Edge, uh, sub, uh, the Void's Edge Cluster, largely because it goes, uh, it borders on the void. There's nothing to find over there. Spurl is located right here. And you guys have, wherever we find you currently with your empty cargo and with the money that you've got on hand, this is where we are picking things up. And 
I think that what I'd like to, st uh, to start with is you guys have uh, some time to, or have had some time to kill. So I'm picturing that um, while you can see all these different installations that are operating off the, the coast there, they're processing the spurl whale, you know, um, uh, materials to, to, to go off. Uh, I will tell you that the, um, the law level forbids any kind of weaponry whatsoever here. Now that does not necessarily mean that you cannot bring weapons down with you. It just means that there will be fun things that would have happened if you tried to do that. So, um, what the way it works, uh, mechanically speaking, is at any time, and I figure it's worth going through this just because you'll understand every time you go to a starport, this is what's going to happen. You make a decision as to how you're going to um, uh, how you're going to you know bring things down. You'll know the law level of the local place, and then I make a roll against the <laughs> law level, and if I succeed, so the higher the law level is, the more likely I am to succeed. The more likely there's going to be something triggered. And that can be anything from, hey, would you report what you have on you to, you know, guys with guns showing up and checking the whole ship. So, and that is largely related to how strong the law level is. So I picture that uh, one of the upsides you've got is that the, um, the Rift Wanderer is equipped with streamlining. So that means it has no difficulty going from surface to, you know, to, the, uh, to space. So you could have easily landed at the downport. And that's, I'm assuming what you guys did um, to have a little bit of downtime. What do you think it, uh, has prompted this bit of downtime? Do you think it's, you just happen to have some time between gigs um, that the, you guys needed after the last run um, that maybe, you know, one or uh, many of you thought that maybe some team bonding time might be of value? What do you guys think has been the first three months of traveling together? How have you guys gelled? We've heard that Dane is like, so let me just make this absolutely clear. There is no weaponry on this ship whatsoever. <laughs> what do you yeah. guys think? I don't know, Captain. What are we doing here? I think, is anyone else from a water world? No. No? Okay, so then I think it's I mean, Anchor may have been the one you, maybe you were uh, with oh. knowing that you were here. Like, it's rare that you get to a place that not only is a water world, uh, but also has enough techno, like enough of a, a, a safe civilization that you can safely sail out and not get like attacked by, you know, uh, the like extras from water world, um, particularly in the reach. Um, and it's an opportunity to actually like does does anchor. I know he's got the sailing, the like water, you know, sailing uh, skill. Yeah. Do you think it's in a motorized thing, or is it like sail, sail, or? It could be in anything. I didn't see me check with the. Sure. I mean, I, I think from Dane's point of view, you know, he's. It was so traumatic. He he still. I think he's still on wind down. Okay. And 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 if he's told, you know, we're going to like a water pleasure world, he'll just nod and, and smile and think, yeah, okay, I'll take a bit of that. Okay. I mean, sure. Why don't we go do some sailing? So that's what we see. Is maybe there is a uh, and it's built in kind of a um, to to keep it in this sci-fi setting. Like it's very much what we would recognize as a sailing craft, but there are different aspects with like you know maybe some Volani influence and and other like developments over time. Uh, it would have the, the level of accoutrements and like technology that we'd see in like a late 90s thing. So like there's going to be GPS on there. There's going to be um, just at, at a bare minimum, there's going to be engines that are advanced enough to be in that kind of era. Um, so in, in, in a pinch, if you need to get yourself back, you'll have that. Um, the uh, And then you're also whatever gear you have brought down will, will be with you. But maybe we see just like... Uh, it's not like you see in the illustration here where it's overcast. It's actually a fairly nice sunny day. Uh, and you guys, there are probably trawlers going out to, you know, to uh, with a big Judico logo on the side. Judico for all your environmental degradation needs. Um, <laughs> what you um, what, what you can see though is that you've managed to find a little patch of ocean where you can still see the, you know, the, um, the starport, but you're having an opportunity to, to actually relax. So anchors out on deck and maybe like, you know, getting the sails. Um, how is everyone else? So Dr. Abdel, um, Alonzo, and Captain Gani, how are you guys feeling about this uh, impromptu break? It's not the worst, but it's also a little boring. 
you know. Okay. I don't think he's upset, but he's, you know, anxious for the adventures to begin. What does he yeah, think the adventure is going to be? Like, what does he foresee that actually being? Yeah. Yeah, I don't. He doesn't know. I mean, I, I don't think that he's like intrigue, you know, maybe some, some kind of uh, angst, conspiracies running into it. Um, maybe some kind of, uh, he doesn't know exactly, right? He just- Does he have writer's block right now? Or is he writing? Probably, he's, okay. you know, he wants to write about an adventure. And so, you know, until that event, he feels until that adventure happens, he doesn't know what to write about. And, you know, writing about leisure stays or, you know, time down isn't very exciting. Okay. I don't know. Hemingway wrote a lot about that. <laughs> <laughs> so what about uh, Captain uh, Ganny or Dr. Abdel? I think Dr. Abdel is enjoying it. This is part of the new experiences he's getting, having now sort of left the, the lab behind, but he's probably also sometimes checking the time and go like there's a recital at the resort later that i'd really like to go to it it's <laughs> uh so he's like just making sure that we don't stay on the water too long because he's, he has a keen interest in, in, in music and art so yeah, perhaps yeah, he, he wants to go back for like the you know there's like whatever insert you know, i think it's one of those like it's same line as bach tchaikovsky and then insert fic fictitious fictional you know yeah to make it sort of sci-fi uh We'll be, we'll be playing at the resort later, so if it could be back by, he, he's but he's enjoying it. You know, this is sort of a new experience for him, team bonding with, with the lads, so to speak. All these military types have way more life experience than he has. I love the idea of him saying it with, like that too. We're doing team bonding with the lads. Yeah. <laughs> You've got your uh, athletics training to do. Uh, yes, I do. Is. Yes, yes. So you know, just enough of that. Just let me sir. <laughs> so or maybe the doctor can be like helping with the you know actually helping with the sales and all that kind of stuff if he wants some get some exercise in <laughs> he's maybe like checking his hands for like the, the calluses that have never been on there before yeah. <laughs> Holy <Surgeon's shit>. hands. <laughs> so uh i love it so uh, captain ganny um if you walk out on deck i think what you see is anchor is uh, perhaps you know the most at home here um Dr. Abdel seems quite uh, out of place and anxious to, to get himself back to something else. Alonzo may be standing at the front or the back of the ship, just furiously chain smoking. Um, yeah. Dane is stalking around like a caged panther. <laughs> you found out then rather than being relaxed by the wide open skies, he's finding that him he's pacing himself around on deck like he was on the ship as well. <laughs> So it does definitely seem that everyone needs a little bit of a pressure release. Captain Ganny, what are you thinking walking out under this uh, deck? Well, I'm conscious of uh, needing to uh, figure out the next uh, next, tr next trade. Yeah. I'm wondering, with being close to Tech World, if there's a, a gig that could be done there. Oh, Pick yeah. Up some of that is... sweet Tech Level 15 stuff. Yeah, it's uh, and that can be kind of... Um... Uh, very, yeah, it, uh, I mean, it can be uh, lucrative uh, and uh, dangerous at times. That Tech World is like effectively, guys, it's a giant, like, nanobot run, hyper advanced uh, technology thing. Like, it, it's, um, you know, one, you know, opening credits uh, away from being just a complete disaster film at the highest <laughs> level of technology possible. It's a super <laughs> fucking cool place. Um, what is Captain Ganny's take on? We've heard how everyone else is sort of has been, you know, handling these last three months worth of. I guess what we didn't hear from uh, Anchor though. What what is uh, how's Anchor been handling this? You've heard how everyone else has sort of been, like, you know, Alonzo's eager for some adventure. Dane's feeling like you know a little cooped up. Uh, Doctor Ilias, it seems, may still be. You know, Alonzo's got a, a point in uh, uh, Jack of all trades, but uh, Doctor Ilias has a point in Culture Vulture. So, what do you think, Anchor? <laughs> Well, I think uh, Anchor is here to, you, you know, he's trying to motivate people, get people to contribute to like the sailing of the yacht here. And um, if Dane looks like he's pacing back and forth, you know, just point out, hey, well, do this, do that, you know, giving orders out. Um, whether Dane follows them or not, that's up to him. But, uh, you know, I think Anchor is having a good time. It's he, He'd rather be out here in the open space and on the water than 
you know, as much as he was in the Navy, mm. this is this is a fun this is fun for him. That he I probably can... even has he probably even has like a bandana. <laughs> you know, it's got a bandana <laughs> on his head. Fantastic, you know, like an old old style Salamani pirate. You know. Yeah, yeah. And I picture him doing that kind of that dog thing where he just kind of sticks his nose his snout up and kind of. Yep. yep. <laughs> oh. Smells the air, the salt air. Yeah. It's yeah, great. yeah. And it's really something different away from um like away from shore as well too. Like like mm. waterfronts often smell like fucking awful <laughs> you know because it's rot and seaweed and whatnot too but being out on the uh, like on the actual ocean it's just a very different uh experience uh and and, and again again like this there's that thought that this is something a place that is uh, like entirely safe you can swim in the water without real fear for predators you can sail out without fear of pirates um yeah, the only thing that's is the problem um, had did anyone so for some of you guys I don't think this would be an issue whatsoever so for Dr. Abdel for uh, Alonzo no issue leaving your guns behind Dane when you heard I don't think it's the first place I mean I mean, you're uh, you were part of one of the most disciplined you know military uh, branches in Traveler so you're not like you know ah, using guns all the time you know um, but how do you feel going down now that you are out of that uh, and you're going down into an area where it is as controlled as uh, as really things can be. Yeah, I've got to start taking the view that I am the weapon. Mm, okay. So, so, so I'm going to leave leave the leave the, leave the gun stuff uh, up, uh, up on the ship, and I've, I've I've got to try and break break some of my uh, some of my old ways, and okay. just regard myself as being adept when the need comes. Okay. So uh, where would we see, we, we've got Alonzo at one end of the ship, Dr. Abdel's trying to help out here. Uh, what is um, Dane doing on the ship? Well, I think I think I think he is actually. I think he's actually almost grateful for, to, to anchor. I think he's gonna he's gonna just he's, he's, gonna, he's quite happy. He's quite happy to do something. Yeah. Um, and so uh, you know he's gonna lose himself in the activity. Okay. Just to try and draw himself into a bit of a relax. Okay. So, uh, Captain, what you're seeing as you walk onto the deck, uh, and you've got, uh, you're, I guess, uh, Captain, are you, uh, are you trying to get any guns down to the planet, or are you leaving those behind no, as well? No, 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 no. Okay. Not. All right. Uh, the <laughs> yeah, Chitico, uh If you fuck us, we'll fuck you. <laughs> uh, so what um, what you see uh, is it sounds like is anchor is like doing a really uh, hell of a job of. Uh, Dane is throwing himself into the the task. The, maybe the the sails are out, and whoom, you guys are going to sail down to uh, like there's maybe a, a pretty little lagoon a little further down. Um, not like tropical vacation kind of stuff, but like even you know I, I'm picturing that the the climate here is probably akin to like the um, Pacific Northwest. Uh, so it's cooler, but uh, you know it, it, it's a summertime uh, on uh, on Spurl right now. So you still could swim in the water, but it's got that kind of like deciduous or, or a coniferous trees as opposed to the like luxurious tropical trees we would we would think of as like the Caribbean or, or something like that. The only one who seems sort of out of place here, um, Captain, is Alonso. He definitely seems to be still unable to you know to decompress. What do you do? I've probably got the nickname Heretic for him now, I think. But I'll <laughs> go across uh, to uh, uh, to uh, feeling on edge there. Well, no, just bored, I guess, would be the best way to put it. Indeed, can't be having kicking our heels here forever. Got to do some trading. I then you'll have, have a story to write. I hope so. You were saying you were thinking of visiting the the tech planet. That could well, have some danger in it. Well, always if we can, if we've got enough money to buy some good tech, it's good for selling further off into the rift. That that high tech. Uh, High tech stuff pick, picks up a pretty penny on the less developed worlds. Oh, definitely. Well, I've got a few credits burning a hole in my pocket. So uh, I, I wouldn't worry, Alonzo. You know, I think Danger will find us. You know, it has a way of doing that. 
<laughs> so to get, tell you about Tech World, uh, in, in the entry in the uh, TAS Guide to the Trojan Reach uh, is uh, the first colony here, a Soleimani outpost, was destroyed by the Sindalan Empire's punitive armada. So that would have been 2,500 years ago. Uh, the world lay empty for hundreds of years until uh, the Judico uh, funded the construction of a starport here. Judico. Um, to encourage Imperium Hirate trade through the borderlands. To reduce the cost of uh, constructing the starport, they contracted with renegades from the technologically advanced world of Newman in uh, the in Gazulian subsector. Uh, while the world of Newman has the highest level of technology in any world in the whole sector, uh, its use is heavily restricted by the Shield Church. The heretics were easy, uh, eager to take advantage of Judico's offer of a world of their own and funding to develop their science. Judico, happy to be behind the advanced science in uncontrolled and ungoverned spaces. Uh, the human population of Tech World is around 4,000. The robot population is around a million and rising, depending on how one tallies distributed intelligence computer with numerous slave bodies. Experiments in using nanotechnology, cloning, and other technologies of questionable legality are ongoing, and Tech World is attracting increasing numbers of researchers who wish to pursue lines of inquiry not permitted in the Imperium. Judico refuses to put pressure on the tech world rulers to rein in their scientific experimentation, claiming that its contact, a contract with the tech world government begins and ends with the starport. The tech world starport is a minor wonder of the subsector. The starport is a huge black ovoid that reconfigures itself dynamically to cope with rising and falling traffic. The interior walls are actually curtains of small bioplastic that can move and reshape themselves to create larger or smaller landing bays and warehousing. Every visitor is assigned a guide robot uh, programmed to their needs and security is assured by keying everything to the user's genetic code. And this is, I didn't load it yet, but I will. That's the starport on Tech World. And it's independent. The starport is run by Judico. Yeah. Judico, trust us. <laughs> okay. Everything else on Star on, on uh, Tech World though is uh, outside of the starport is technically separate. I mean, yeah. to leave and come to the planet, you need to go through Judico's starport, but technically, they're all independent. I mean, okay. there's everything's independent around here, right? We're near the higher it, but yeah, the space is. All... Uh, you know, let me do this, guys, so you can actually take a look. Let me give you the <clears throat> uh, two subsectors uh, that we're going to be in for now as a handout. Let's see here. Yeah, if, here uh, if Anchor over here is that talk of trade, kind of looks at Dane and says. And and says, well, really, we, if we want to trade in, these, in this area, we probably should invest in armament for the ship. Yeah, some of these uh, yeah, things in the Voyage Edge cluster, um, there are some planets that are just skipped over by the... Um, um, by the Imperial Navy. Uh, they cruise by sometimes. The Hyret doesn't really have a lot of interest in here. Wow, they're close. But there is a, I will tell you that there is a tradition among the, um, uh, the uh, what do you call it, the Aslan, the lion folk guys, uh, called uh, the uh, Ihate, I believe. Is that right? I've read this so many times when we were playing before, Jeff, that uh, that uh, I think that's right. Yeah, Ihate. The Ihate are kind of like, you know how in um, Middle Age, uh, Middle Ages uh, Europe that like second sons or third sons were often troublemakers because they kind of need to go and do their own thing. They're not inheriting anything. That is what the Ihate are. So from a warrior culture, line folk thing, there's a bunch of Ihate who have to kind of go out and do their thing and... Sometimes they feel that conquering other planets is a way of doing that, or invading other planets and taking over parts of it. So, uh, and in fact, there is a uh, planet uh, or a system called Aron Seer that is run by a bunch of Ihate uh, that recently you've heard has had some conflict in it. Uh, so, just as of recently, so, and I mentioned that because Aron Seer is a mere, like, it's two jumps away for you. 
It's only four parsecs away. <clears throat> so, yeah, there is, uh, you're not wrong that uh, there is uh, a lot of open spaces. And uh, I've also heard that there are some pirates uh, in the region as well, too. Whether they're related to Drinax or not is another question, but uh, definitely piracy is a thing in here. So. Yeah. Captain Ganny, you have your, um, was it your transceiver as well too, right? Something that'll that'll constantly, yep. and it's it's portable? Yep. Yeah. It barely so, weighs anything. Uh, yeah, here we go. Radio Love Tech level 13. Oh yeah, that's amazing. And a thousand uh, kilometer range. So you'll be in contact wherever you want. What do you think your computer looks like? Oh, again. It's pretty still tiny. It's going to be uh, again um, probably about the same as one of those old Tech Level Eight uh, Solomani um, uh, a smartphone. No, I guess it'd be the same as a uh, uh, not an e-reader. What I'm having a brain failure. Tablet. Tablet. Oh yeah, yeah. Because yeah, this is what there's the illustration they give for one. I'm not sure what tech level it's supposed to be. Looks pretty durable as well. Looks like it folds down as well. It's yeah, sci-fi it's, laptop. It, it's half a kilo, so it's really pretty light. Mm, okay. Uh, so you're talking. Uh, what, what do you guys? Uh, what do you think that the um, the relaxing thing is planned here? What, what's the uh, Captain Bigani? Are you the one who sort of planned this team building thing, or was it uh, Anchor who sort of took the lead? You sort of said, "Hey, we should do this," and Anchor was the one who took the lead once you heard you were going to Spurl. Well, I'm guessing as a uh, uh, as a Vargar, uh, Anchor's got a view, a very team team oriented. So maybe it was him. Okay, so Anchor, what's planned for tonight? Do you guys have a meal that you're gonna to prep together? Do you have uh, something, uh, you, you can't really um, fish here because the uh, the, the right. main things are gonna be those uh, amoeba whales and that uh, is the bread and butter of uh, Judico's operation here. Judico, don't fish. <laughs> I think the plan would be to get a good meal together and then, um, you know, some of us will go to the opera and some of us will go bar hopping. Yeah, and I think you've arranged for to be back in time for uh, Dr. Abdel's thing. So, uh, and, yeah. and perhaps if you're wanting to be there earlier, it'll be easy enough to to uh, charter like a um, uh, hovercraft or a shuttlecraft or something like that to come snag you, uh, Dr. Ilias or Dr. Abdel, to be sure to be back in time for that. Now I can use my graph car. Oh, maybe that's what you got. Yeah, that's maybe that you don't even need to worry about trying to service something on you know. Uh, on a relatively low tech world, you've got your grav car. Lot, maybe that's what we, no, how we know it's a sci fi thing is as the uh, ship goes away, we see there's a car that's kind of like tied up to the back of it that's hovering along. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think your grav car looks like? Uh, well, traditionally, they've got these weird open top things, don't they? Yeah. So, are we going to stick with that or? Your call. As a guy whose day job involves a lot of car accident stuff, I would not want to be the one to ensure traveler open top drive <laughs> draft cars. <laughs> it's like <laughs> <laughs> that shit is hard to survive a collision in. So then I can imagine it being quite blocky. I'm going to say that he'll have uh, d taken a ex navy surplus mm. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like a kind of a a more rugged overland thing. Yep. Okay. So uh, with a certain amount of um, basic armor, a, a bit of the equivalent of the uh, of a tech level twelve or thirteen Humvee or something like that. Love it. Uh, it's taken us one session for me to shoehorn a uh, grav jeep into here, so that's great. <laughs> <laughs> so you, um, yeah, you, you, that's how what the plan is for getting back. Um, uh, wh who is involved uh, in what capacity for prepping the meal? Anyone just sitting back and having a cocktail, or are you guys actually, um, anyone actually enjoy, any, anyone's character yeah, actually enjoy that stuff? We can't fish, but I guess we gotta, you know, we can't fish ourselves, but I guess it'll be... Yeah, you brought you plenty know. of supplies for from the uh, Starport. One of the upsides to that is that, like, a lot of the vendors there, again, because the, the um, Spurl Downport is a, is a nice place for people to relax, uh, it also means that those local vendors constantly are buying stuff from all over the place. 
Uh, so you do get to have a pretty exotic meal of uh, things taken not only over the Void's Edge cluster, but uh, perhaps even uh, the wider region. Mm -hmm. And there are going to be cat like um, things beyond just the uh, spurrow whales that are caught. So you may have some exotic seafood uh, that you could have purchased. You just can't try and catch it yourself, I don't think. Right. Cool. Yeah, so I think it would, I feel like it would be that. Okay. So I don't know if anyone is a... Yeah, anyone... I don't think anyone has... I don't think anyone has, like, cooking. Okay. So perhaps Dr. Sure. Abdel Maybe is the one who picked out the liquor uh, for uh, to go with dinner? Actually, Dr. Abdel is a tea turtler. Oh, I see. Okay. So then... Ever perhaps... since that incident at university, he's... Oh, good call. So perhaps then it is the, a... The um, of... What do you call it? He's happy for others to partake. Uh, maybe he then... Uh, it's a non-alcoholic uh, aperitif of some kind. Uh, that he has purchased lo that will, you know, be something beyond just local water or, you know, uh, whatever other kind of, you know, um, non-healthy drink <laughs> is uh, is there. What about uh, Captain Ganny? Dane, I imagine you do not have uh, any training in, in cooking, <laughs> really. No, I'm expecting a, a high-protein energy energy meal ready for... No, hang on, wait, no, no, just <laughs> yeah. whatever, whatever. <laughs> And here are your boiled chicken breasts. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> yeah. Alonzo, do you cook whatsoever? Uh, I mean, I don't have cooking specifically, but I do have survival and I have jack of all trades. So, I mean, I probably I have a bit, cooked yeah. for myself. Yeah. Okay, so maybe you're in the kitchen with Anchor. Um, Captain Ghani, do you spend well, any time in the I galley? Have... Or... No, well, I will have brought uh, some rum to keep the... Uh, morale up okay. and also with my background i'll have also because it's a special occasion with the team i'll have brought some ardassi uh, fire water as well nice you know, some people perhaps aren't uh aren't teetotal <laughs> okay. us, us navy folks yeah you know, like a tipple or two okay so then um you're all sort of sitting around the um you know in the galley of this um while, you know, I, I can picture that there's sort of a common room where you would eat and then the galley is right next to there. So you're able to sort of talk to one another as things are, are preparing. Um, Captain Ganny, you actually have heard uh, from someone. And there is an opportunity that only uh, in the afternoon presented itself. After you talk to everyone, you sort of like double checked again. And this is someone who you have dealt with before but it is the prospect of four months of paid work and an opportunity to earn on the side while doing so. Uh-huh. So the person who has contacted you is from the, uh, the Argona system, and his name uh, is... Oh, right here. His name is Joaquin Struson. I'll put that in chat for you. Joaquin. They're one jump away. Mm. So there's uh, Joaquin. Oop. Where did... Did that show up? Yes. Yeah, yeah my, my chat display is completely fucked right now. I can see... The last thing I can see in here, let me just put something in. Now I can see it. So whatever the last thing that displays there, uh, we may have some challenges seeing people's dice rolls. Thankfully, most of these character sheets display great big things, but uh, yeah, my text box is huge and I do not seem to be able to change the size of it. So, oh, wait, 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 wait. I can slightly. I still can't see. Oh, there we go. I fixed it. Never mind. I fixed. I may have broken it. So <laughs> I fixed the thing I broke. Is what I'm saying. Um, what? Um, so what you know about uh, Joaquin is that he is a, a businessman operating out of Argona uh, with interest in shipping and heavy industry. Uh, you've known him to be 
uh, he's sort of a wheeler and dealer. He has shares in, in uh, several ships, and he has uh, he also buys and sells uh, shares in cargo, contracting ships for specific um, jobs. But the thing that is the most uh, interest for you is that he's a member of uh, something called the Borderland Alliance, which is a loose organization dedicated to promoting stability and prosperity in uh, the region, particularly in the Void's Edge uh, cluster. Uh, I think that you've had positive dealings with him before, um, but the he has a requested, uh, and this is not unusual, um, but he has uh, said that he, to, he wishes to, to, to meet in person about this. The opportunity will be for four months worth of work, or uh, paid for four months of work, but you may get done earlier, and an opportunity to earn on the side while doing so. Mm-hmm. And Argona is also in there, just so we know. Argona is a mining colony established by the PRQ Corporation. Um, Gitico, better than PRQ. Uh, more than three quarters of the planet is covered in three glaciers, so miners bore down through the ice using hot drill vehicles or orbital mirrors to reach the mineral deposits. In addition to Zukai crystals and other gemstones, Argona has significant copper, tungsten, uranium, and platinum deposits. A whole colony has grown up in the tunnel network under the glaciers administered by a board of trustees nominated by both the miners union and corporations. Argona has a strong tradition of industrial action during the infamous strike of 38. Miners used hot drillers uh, miners using hot drillers collapsed part of a glacier on top of an executive transport ship, trapping the corporate executives there until they agreed to negotiate. The approach to Argona's starport is a harrowing one. The port is located in an artificial, uh, a huge artificial ice cavern some 200 meters below the surface. Approaching ships must fight their way through the near constant hurricanes and blizzards, then navigate down the right chasm in the ice, and finally fly down a narrow borehole barely wider than a ship's beam. At the starport, visitors can hire a hot borer and go prospecting. The glaciers block conventional prospecting methods such as satellite scans, so the only way to find new mineral deposits is to bore through the ice and collect samples. A lucky borer might make his fortune by finding a vein of uranium or platinum-bearing rock lit beneath the ice. There are stories of strange monsters living underneath the glaciers of ruined structures from some <laughs> primordial civilization and of Zukai crystals depo crystal deposits of incredible size and value. But most of those stories are just fables just spun by drunken miners to impress greenhorns at the starport. There are no ice worms and certainly tales of a giant crystal called the Eye of Argona must be purest fantasy. At least that's what the TAS has to say about Argona. So... Captain Gunny, that is the op that is the uh, opportunity you heard about, um, and uh, you've been waiting to dinner to discuss it with the crew. Do we know how much is on that uh, translates into? Uh, he has not said yet, but that's not necessarily unusual because that may be up for negotiation in person. The fact that he wants to meet in person suggests that uh, they there's more to this that he can't share or is at least unwilling to share on open channels. You also suspect you might not be the only one who got the, uh, that, uh, that word or the invite. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, once we uh, get to sit down and have whatever, um, tofu feast, Dr. Abdel has come up with, um, I'll be saying, uh, lads, I may have a proposition that'll give us a little bit of action coming ahead. Four months of paid work. And I don't know about you, but I could do with the credits. So, four months and only uh, a jump two away. Although it's a lot less uh, hospitable than here. So, danger, you're saying? cold <laughs> oh I think if he tells you uh, or if Captain Gany mentions Argona <laughs> you can assume each of you sort of call up if you're not familiar with it you call up the information you can what I read out to you you would know that now high station zebra yeah but a bit of trading or we can try and uh, ship <laughs> some of this pearl whale antifreeze 
over to uh, the planet and maybe there'll be some good crystals uranium that we can ship back that could be good business there yeah so it's trade you think he's looking for a, a trade vessel to to move goods around guessing but so it's not just like uh we're hauling uranium we're going to be mining uranium no i'd be guessing we're hauling it yeah, he would know your skill set, and the the important part that he's saying, if he's saying you can also earn on the side, that means it's probably something of high value that doesn't take up a lot of space. Which uranium might spring to mind, or or gemstones, or zucchini crystals, maybe. Yep. Or the eye of Argona. Or monsters. <laughs> Monster. That's right. space to bring some extra cargo. But it's a commission. I mean, it's not just free trade. It's 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 a paid job, which is interesting. Yeah. Credits are always good. I well, must admit, a flat fee for a length of time and getting still paid that while for the duration and uh, getting a chance to earn on the side. This is a very and to give context. It's a sweet contract that you can't expect to see what very often. So there must be a catch. Oh, most definitely. <laughs> it just has to be. Okay. Right. It's all it sounds too good to be true. And well, and the fact that there's no, no particulars shared with it as well, you're not wrong to think that, oh, this is unusual. But that is, you know, no risk, no reward is sort of the uh, the motto. Except for yeah, with Jitico. Jitico is don't risk, just buy. <laughs> we definitely could meet with them and see what happens. Or is he just going to meet? He just wants to meet with you, Captain. Oh, he'll want to meet with a crew. Okay. Especially with a small crew like yours, it's not expected that, that like one person uh, says something and everything goes. Um, it's expected a lot of these things, uh, especially for free traders like um, Captain Ganny and, and your crew, uh, you guys are expected to have a say in it. Kind of like, you know, pirate, you know, democracy. Yeah. Small unit tactics. Yeah, it's, it's the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Less dead folks in foreign lands, I guess, in uh, in, the, in the prior case. No, if it's a pirate, then probably not, actually. It's exactly no. that. <laughs> <laughs> so what that means, to give context, uh, so there's a couple of things you can do. Right now, you have an empty hold, and you, you guys have a bunch of uh, credits left uh, over. A couple of things you can do. Um, with guaranteed, uh, well, there's a couple of things. Uh, involving um, transporting things. You can try and find passengers who might want to make their way to Argona and uh, try and just ferry some people there. I can't remember if the... Yeah, I think we do. Wanderer has a low berth. It does have... We do have low berth. Yeah, you got, so you got six low berth plus uh, enough space here because uh, you guys have... I'm looking at the the layout of the far trader right Seven now. Seven other staterooms too. Yeah, you got a lot of state rooms as well. So there are six of you, five of you, uh, and let's see here. One, two, three, down near the bridge, and then there are uh, seven up top. So yep. you guys have, what, five free berths? Uh, so yep. six uh, low berths, and then five, I guess, regular it says, it says standard times 10, low birth yeah, times so 6. Oh, there, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Instead of me reading off the map, I can yeah. look at the actual particulars. Uh, but you've got to count off the map because it's I so think lovely. It's, it's, it's a yeah, fun, yeah. lovely maps. <laughs> so what that means, that is one way uh, of earning. In addition, and this is not, uh, in a, not uh, separate from it, you can also cover freight. Uh, what, there are two different options there. One of them is just to so secure freight fees. People want to have shit moved around, even in the Void's Edge sector. See if there's some stuff available here. Pick up the cargo, transport it. You don't need to worry about uh, investing your own money. You just need to transport the stuff. The other thing is is speculative trade, speculative trade, forgive me, or smuggling. Smuggling will be challenging in a high tech level world like right. Squirrel, but not impossible. Speculative trade is just investing your own money into whatever uh, is available and trying to sell it where you're going for a higher fee or just keeping it on, uh, you know, in your cargo hold until such time as you find a place where you can sell it for more. So 
Um, what you guys can do here, even though this is a fairly <laughs> low-tech world, as I said, it's a high, it's a pretty big um, starport, and there are people from all over the place who happen to stop here because it's a nice, the downport, Swirl downport is a nice place to relax. So there may be more opportunities for unusual cargoes. The way we do that is we roll randomly to see what kind of cargoes are available based on, on uh, some of your trading rolls and things like that. It's not called yeah, trading. Yeah, let's so. see what's available. Yeah, I see, I say go for freight and if, to try to fill up as much of the hold as possible. And then if we have leftover room, then um, look for some speculative, speculative stuff. So why don't we do this? Yeah, so do how do much, we have any money? Yeah, how much this loose money does everyone have? Uh, uninvested uh, funds right now. What yeah, is your... I mean, 950 credits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean... Um... I have 118,000 credits. Yeah, and then uh, Anchor has has 65,075 credits. So how do you guys want to handle the uh, individual traveler's money? Are you going to invest it all and treat it like this is where operational expenses come from, like you know paying for fuel, like paying for paying for uh, birthing, paying for you know accommodations. Um, or are you going to keep your, your funds separately? And then also what you can invest in, in speculative trading, or are you going to keep things separate? Um, well, I was thinking of, you know, some of my money of investing it in some way to be like part of the ship's crew, right? Because mm -hmm. two of the other guys, this is sort of their ship. And so, okay, you know, having money involved to be a part of the ship's value but, sure. you know, I'm not going to give away all my money to that, hopefully. How much are you thinking of kicking in? Let's just, we'll start, to, we'll imagine that at some point you guys sat around, you know, and uh, started tallying together what your operational expenses are going to be. Well, why don't I put 100,000 credits into our ship money okay. for like buying, buying stuff and then I'll keep 18,000 credits for myself. Okay, so that'll be in a bank somewhere. Do you to go banking? Yeah. Probably so. <laughs> I think we should have like a ship's fund where we can all contribute yeah. and then that's used for repairs, upgrades, birthing. Then we can obviously have our own individual Yeah, we'll have funds. a maintenance thing. Okay, so why don't we, if someone wants, who wants to be the uh, quartermaster? Uh, you'll be in charge of managing the ship cargo and adding and subtracting the, the cargo as it goes, managing the ship's uh, expenses. By which I'm saying it's not me. <laughs> yeah, it's got to be one of those. And, and also, like, is training it's, admin. So yeah, I'm happy to. One of the things is this is for, from the player facing side. This is just this is a fun part of the game. If it doesn't right. appeal to you as a player at all, don't volunteer yourself. You know, f find someone who actually wants to keep track of that stuff. So, and the advantage there is that you'll know when you can spend some extra stuff to you know when the players might be able to pick up something else. If you're taking the role of the cargo master, you're the one who's going to be in charge of financing and making sure that that you've got enough, uh, and that the rest of the crew is aware of what you know. We're short in X, Y, Z right now, so now's a good time to get like a safe cargo as opposed to rest, you know, risking with speculative. That's yeah. the fun of that part of the game. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I'll I'll, get, I'll contribute um, forty thousand to the ships. Okay. Fund. Uh, who wants to? So we still don't have to decide who's the quartermaster. I think Dr. Ilias, having run a lab and having spent lots of years <laughs> yes. going about yeah. individual nice. materials and, and uh, sure. involving and dealing with it. university uh, admin. Thank you, David. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, um, so yeah. If you're cool with that, David, I mean, if you're yeah, wanna yeah, do no, yeah, okay. yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, I mean. So that's 140,000 credits. Um, what about Dane and Captain Gunn? Oh, Captain Gunn, he's got 900 credits to his name. What about Dane <laughs> uh, and Dr. Abdel? Do you have anything you wish to contribute to the... I'll put, I'll put 30K in. Okay. Uh, I'll add 50. Nice. So that puts you guys at uh, uh, what total? 260? That's a pretty good start. We should be able to get some kind of... Uh... Okay. Well, you are fueled up right now, but you will have to pay for, for refueling as well if you don't. I think that... Does the Far Trader have a uh, fuel scoop? And a processor? It does, I believe. It does, it yeah. does have the fuel scoop and processor. Awesome. Yep. So one of the things to bear in mind when you are looking at the map is um, what places have uh, gas giants and which do not. Mm -hmm. uh, because or the... Wa and water, or water worlds, right? Yeah. 
But we can also buy refined fuel from the starport. Yeah, you can buy exactly. So long as there's a starport, you can buy refined fuel. But the uh, uh, the others are for free. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's it's the code or the um, uh, guide uh, is at the bottom of the sheet and the side of the sheet. This is actually from the back of the adventure, but for some reason they had the subsectors on one direction. They had the guide on the other, so I've cut and pasted it. Oh, yeah. it, it takes about a day for us to process fuel for our entire uh, fuel tank. Okay. It's pretty yeah, efficient. so we'd have to, if we have to go into, if we'd like land in water or hit a gas giant, we just got to orbit around for a day while it processes before we can head out. Yeah. Nice. That's pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I was, I kind of was looking also, like, I think it, and eventually we want to get some guns on the ship. It'd uh, probably be like, no, someone said no, no guns on the ship. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we need guns. I Lots guess. of guns. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably something I, I was kind of looking. It's probably going to be like about four million credits or so. Just step by. Okay. Okay. So we do have to money. make some money here. Yeah. 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 Because yeah, it costs us a thousand, uh, over a thousand credits a week to run it. Yeah. Yeah. We could also put in defensive systems if you want to. Right. Which, if there are yeah. pirates around, sandcasters and such are, are quite handy. Yeah. I don't know. I was thinking of, well, maybe Dan and I, Dan and I can talk it over at some point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can, we can go triple pulse if you want. I'm, I'm, yeah, tri I'm not triple, sure. triple pulse, maybe a close in <laughs> particle accelerator. <laughs> <laughs> so, so then, the thing to talk over tonight is um, the. Uh, I guess then you've got your what you've got in in terms of money. You want to see what is available. How, oh, how much cargo can the ship take on? That's 65, 64 tons. 64, 65, I guess. Okay, and then what does the grav car take up? Uh, I actually got my me. vehicle book right here. Let's yeah, there's uh, on the vehicle handbook. <laughs> It's not that, is it? <laughs> Whoever the uh, the um, you know insurance lawyers are in the uh, Third Imperium, uh, they would call that uh, job security. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Grav car. Gives you about ten tons, isn't it, for an air raft? Is it four? Uh, so an air raft is four tons. Four. Yeah. So yeah. we've got sixty left. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then, uh, I'm which, sure we have more room than credits. Why don't we do the speculative trade stuff first uh, and see what's uh, here? So, because uh, then you can make a decision as to whether it's stuff you want to pick up or not. Um, where am I here? Uh, okay. I mean, if the captain approves, also, um, I think that uh, Alonzo would see if there's any anybody looking for passage yeah so we'll do that but that's there's three different uh, parts of like each of them you need to see uh, kind of determine what's available the one that no, is I know, I'm most... just pointing it out that uh, he would be willing to do that if the captain okays it got it okay so first test is asking around so this will be um, you know in, in the heist movie version of our campaign you guys are sitting around uh, the the you know the table at the in the galley of your rented uh, sailboat, talking about what you're gonna do, and we'll be cutting to scenes of you going around and asking. First thing you need to do for speculative trade is find a supplier. Uh, this involves, I'm on page 241 of the um, 2022 core rulebook, for those who wanna follow along. Yeah. Uh, finding a supplier or buy, uh, uh, a supplier or broker is a an average broker check. If you wanna find a black market supplier, or broker of illegal goods, that is a average streetwise check. Finding an online supplier or broker, uh, you can't do here because it's a TL7 world. Internet does not come here, which means that this is a blessed paradise, except for we're playing <laughs> our fucking game on the internet right now, so I guess. <laughs> yeah. What am I talking about? The well, good thing it's a class B starport. Yeah, so. so it gives plus four to this stuff. So what are you guys thinking? Who's gonna take the lead here? Uh, or who who is trained in broker? How about we start with that? I think someone's got it because that was one of the skills we got from our traveler package. Oh, does someone have it? 
I have Streetwise, so I mean, I can look for illegal goods. <laughs> we don't yeah, get no, broker. No. We must have got broker. Someone got broker. Yes, because it's. Is it in the pack? Yeah. I'm double checking here, but I'm, I'm almost certain that it's part of that. Because that's just such a classic traveler thing. I think. No, I it have... isn't. Traveler skill package. No. So that's let's do it. I think yeah. someone is going to get broker. Then who do we think? I, I, it makes sense that Captain Ganny probably is the one who has it. Yeah, he's done a lot, of, quite a bit of this. He's actually worked as a, as a far trader. Yeah, yeah. So Captain Ganny, you can add broker okay. one uh, to your cool. skill list. Cool. Nice. Nice intellect. Okay, uh, and in this version of Traveler, there is a concept of advantage and disadvantage. Uh, but it's rolling 3D, so it's like, um, uh, kind of like rolling uh, stats in new D&D, &D where you roll 3D6, uh, keep the best two or the worst two. Um, I'm seeing about assistance. Working together, here we go. Ah, working together really only works in skill chains, it looks like. And I'm going to quickly just read over because I was reading it uh, yesterday. There's a really good advice. There's which I, I would you know I think other games could learn from. Uh, I'm trying to tell Amanda. She was she was really impressed with it too. They do a good job on page uh, 64 of calling out the difference between dice modifiers, difficulty, and boons and banes of how those different kind of moving sliders can play into it. The difficulty is before any other factors are go into account. So we set the difficulty based on the task. The task itself, absent any other kind of modifiers, that starts there. Dice modifiers in general should only be regarded as those hardwired in the rules. So if it says it in a rule book to add plus one, plus two or whatnot, then we include those. So like the starport modifier, that's one we're gonna include in this. Boons and Banes is where the situational modifiers come in. There's a circumstantial or situational modifier. You get an extra dice or, and then take the better of the two or a extra dice take the worst of the, th of the th uh, not two, the, th the three. Um, what that means is, uh, the reason I wanted to point that out is because situational modifiers means you get to roll with a much better chance than just a flat modifier with it. So if you guys can come up with cool ways to like call in old favors or have certain approaches to things, not just in, in this case, but in any case, it seems like if there's a circumstantial modifier, it'll be rolling an extra dice and keeping the better of better two of three dice. So the game is tilted in favor of uh, if you come up with an in-fiction reason to get a bonus, you get to roll that extra dice. That's cool. Mm -hmm. I like that quite a bit. Uh, and then, and then, and then, yeah, and I don't see... Yeah, so and this is where you, the boons come in as far as working together. If a traveler has help, such as good tools, competent aids, or other beneficial circumstances, they receive a boon. So this is where, even though um, only one person is rolling, if in this sort of circumstance, you guys think that you know there may be some way to help, I'll, I'll probably let you roll uh, for that. Difficulty on most things, unless we um, make any kind of change, is an eight. An eight is always a success, unless we say otherwise. So... Alonzo, for instance, you mentioned that there was a, a streetwise. Uh, you're not trained in in um, broker, but you are trained in streetwise. If you wanted to ask around, you know, uh, Gdco definitely does keep this thing. So I might give you a penalty based on. I might um, adjust the. I might give you a, a bane on it. I won't adjust the difficulty. Uh, I'll just give you a bane on the roll. Uh, but if you succeed, that might give uh, uh, Captain Ganny a boon on his roll. Just as an example, uh, if anyone else has any ideas yeah. what they might want to try, they could do that as well. <clears throat> you said the world is mostly known for its bioorganic materials gained from the... Definitely. Whales. Yeah. This is like space, something... space Nova Scotia. <laughs> it's all... There's our Canadian content for the day. Uh, the uh, It's all just... Uh, Judico is, is, you know, these... Uh, uh, amoeba whales that were introduced to the region, they are extracted in massive haulers and whatnot and sent off. It is, it actually has, the world itself has the uh, trade designation of being rich. Because if it's something that might have come up in, in like the research or as part of a lab being stocked, Dr. Abdel will happily sort of 
give his advice on yeah, yeah I good see quality that. versus bad quality or what, what is in higher demand in terms so of, that would be... which of which of the goods that might be available. Yeah, so let's we'll, we'll put we'll put that one aside because that, that's going to definitely come in once you identify a broker. Um, no. So, we'll, but that's that's a good that's a good way of, of making use of that anchor or Dane. Do you have anything you want to that we see you guys doing or? No, I think probably. Well, what I might be doing is is just checking out a Gona's sale DM sort of sale profile. It's um, trade classifications because whatever um, t- um, cargo we get. Um, it's as much about how, how we can sell, how easily we can sell it as how easily we can buy it. Definitely. So I think we need to just triangulate those two things. It's typically what we should do. And I'll probably do a bit of research with Doc sure. with, uh, on that. So the trade classification, I believe, are Ice World. And I can't see what the other one is. And I. See, the trade classification. Not industrial. Not industrial. Not industrial. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. Let's just keep that in mind when we look at what the uh, what the speculative cargo types actually are. Uh, okay. Let's see if we can afford them, of course, because we haven't got a lot of money. So, uh, Captain Ganny, you've sort of been volunteered for this uh, activity, but uh, Alonso, do you wish to try and assist here? Um, you know, I'm, I feel like character-wise, he would try to, you know, assist because he is kind of looking for adventure and you know asking around about something that you're not supposed to yep. is you know he's not too scared of that so one here's uh, the one thing uh, to to weigh into this because of this the um uh we're not factoring in the law level here for you asking around for sketchy uh types um effect uh, is something that's going to come up and play into a lot of different aspects of the game. Effect just means the difference between what you rolled and what you needed to roll. So if you roll a quite bad effect, like let's say you roll a two when you needed an eight, a minus six effect is this is where we may have that that um, that danger that you wanted. Yeah, <laughs> Jinico, <laughs> for all your corporate space marine needs. Right. Okay, I see. So the farther away you are from success, the more chance there is of something bad. Correct. Or good. Or good. Like when we do extended tests, effect plays in because it's what contributes towards the eventual goal. Okay. Okay. So Um, then what you are going to do uh, is... um, Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, That... that, uh, uh, I, I think the like the trade doesn't need to be the only thing in um, in Traveler, but I think it's a lot of fun. I, and I I've feel that I'm in a better position now as a game master to make that part of the game more fun than just, you know, uh, than we did the first time that Jeff and I and Steve played it when we were just, it became, it was fun, but I mean, like, it was adjusting pretend numbers around without really a, a connection to the story. And I'd like to try it uh, differently this time. Mm-hmm. So... Jeff, would you give us a, um, you're going to roll with, and I think you have to set the boon and bane at the top of the character sheet beforehand. You're rolling with a bane, a streetwise check. At the top of the sheet. Isn't this the one where, like, it triggers, you can set Oh, boon. yeah, there it is. Okay, I see it. Yeah, bane. First roll right. of the campaign. Here we go. And... With a bane. <laughs> <laughs> with a bane, yeah. Five. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a, a failure of minus three. This is just fortunately an average failure. Minus six is where exceptional failure comes in and things can go bad. Six or more is where exceptional success comes in. So I think you um, tell us how uh, Alonzo is going around to sort of the, because uh, you're in the starport by the, by this point. So it's a much you know fancier kind of thing. Um, you're going around trying to like, you know, use your reporter skills as a CD, you know, with a C of your contacts, what, what is the, the trouble he's running into here? Um, well, I think maybe the trouble he's run into is, you know, he's so used to doing this when he was a journalist and, you know, he had his journalist badge. And so he could kind of write these things, these questions off if they sort of started going bad as like, you know, I'm just writing a, I'm just writing a piece on this, right? Like you could kind of avoid trouble by uh, passing off the questions as journalism. But now he's realizing, like, I don't have that anymore. I don't have that badge. I don't have that. So he's he's going about things the same way that he used to, but without the backing of sort of his journalistic background anymore. So he hasn't really got his feet under him for how to do this as a private citizen. Mm. 
I'm picturing that maybe like uh, you're expecting to, you know, the, the current Earth version might be, or like contemporary Earth version at least, uh, maybe you were expecting to go into like kind of a seedy, you know, back alley Tijuana bar and what you've actually walked into is like a full service resort. Yeah, and exactly. you're like, so <laughs> what do we do stuff? And they're like, yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. But then Captain, it is all on you. You're not going to get a boon from the efforts of our intrepid uh, Mr. Santoro. <laughs> but Tried. Captain, would you like to try and track down a broker? And if so, how would you like to do that? All uh, right. Well, I guess I'd first of all have uh, the, is there a traveler's aid society? Mm. Oh. Building there, I'm guessing there would be. So yeah. I would go and uh, canvas around there. Yeah. Ask at a reception. Ask on uh, yeah who the best brokers are in town. I think that's probably going to be uh, reflected by the plus four from your. Um, I'll give you one more plus five total because of the starport. So you're going to give okay. us uh, and is it it's a broker you're trying not uh, streetwise? Oh yeah. <laughs> Due to my absence of any streetwise skill. <laughs> yep. So yeah, give us a uh, broker check at um, using education or society. Your choice. Uh, it defaults to intellect. Uh, for this one, you're using education or society. Okay. Well, it ain't going to be society. <laughs> You're not kind oh, of calling you any you favors said. from family friends. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh wow. Uh, and Boon Bane is a three, so that could uh, it's too higher. That's actually a fourteen then. So that is uh, fourteen is actually an exceptional success. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> That's great stuff. All right. Uh, would you give us a one d six roll, please, Captain? So tell us how many days it is. And you can try multiple times uh, as well. If you find like the first thing is crap, you can uh, roll multiple times. You just get minus one to this finding a broker roll uh, for each additional attempt in the same month. Uh, okay, so it takes you four days of asking around to get that stuff. Um, common goods are things that can be found on any world and trade goods uh, are only found on worlds with matching trade codes. Uh, the amount of each goods available is limited. The tons column of the trade goods uh, <coughs> roll determines how many tons of a, uh, of a type of goods are available for purchase. Let's see here. Um, a supplier will have all common goods available. So looking at the thing here. Uh, so basically common electronics, common industrial goods, common manufactured goods, any of those common ones at the top on page 244. Mm -hmm. Those are all uh, uh, available. Oh, and th this is cool. So it's the common goods available, trade goods that match the trade codes, as well as a quantity of randomly determined goods equal to the population code of the world. Okay. Biochem we can have. Yeah. Ooh, but we probably can't afford. <laughs> uh, so let's see here. The... Um, the other things that are on here, uh, advanced electronics, this uh, rich and water world are the two things that are on here. So advanced electronics are here available, advanced manufactured goods are available, advanced vehicles, crystals and gems, cybernetics. Well, I'm sorry, hold on, I'm on the sale DM, forgive me. Um, yeah, biochemicals on the, because of the water world. Uh, Let's see here. Uh, illegal drugs. Hmm. Uncommon raw materials. Yeah, so uh, under the availability column, there's quite a few things. Uh, would you, let's see here, what's the population? Let's see here. Um, Quantity of random determines equal to the population code of the world. Okay, and the population code on Spurl is, let's see. Uh, 
uh, is eight. So why don't you each give us a D66 roll twice, and then I'll just ignore the last two. Right, everyone other, how about this? Everyone other than the captain, give us twice. That'll give us the the number we need. A D66. D66 twice, please. Yeah. All right. Good. And you guys, I'll, I'll read them out as well, but you can also see these on uh, page 244, 245 for what the results are. Um, but what we also have available are uncommon ores. Uh, let's see, uncommon ores, common industrial goods. Oh, that didn't, hold on, that didn't work properly. So I'll add... Yeah, because it's not. Uh, it's it's uh, it's a d sixty six is what you're rolling. So it's only between oh, one two, two d six and you get. Yeah, that. yeah. So yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I get. I don't know how we do that, but let's just see which ones I need to re-roll here. Thirty. So thirty eight won't work. Forty nine won't work. Yeah. <laughs> okay. How about I just roll it for you guys? How about that? We have some use out of these things. So you can do like roll two roll a two d six and then they get a yeah like that yeah yeah. Four and a four. Oh shit! I almost spilled all the dice. Heck yeah. of a way to like that. break in that thing. Oh, yeah, that'll work. Yeah, that's perfect. That's perfect. Okay, so then uh, robots. Oh, robots. Wow. Heck, yeah. <laughs> robots, crystals, and gems. I can't believe I got advanced weapons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you guys got a pretty good selection. So... I'll Maybe stop talking here. You guys now know you have anything that you can get on a rich or water world. Uh, you have, if you want to test to see what the uh, tonnage available is, we can check that. But is there anything out? You only have 53 tons worth of gear or cargo to fill out here. And I'm not sure if you want to invest all of your money into speculative stuff or whether you want to secure some stuff uh, separately. I don't even know. I mean, like, look, look even robotics, like it's 400,000 per, per ton. It's out of our price range. I think it's most of the common goods, isn't it, that we can afford? Yeah. The problem with the common goods is that they take up too much space, uh -oh. typically. Oh. Okay, are they better, better value than freight? <clears throat> So free... Yeah, but even something that's four hundred thousand per ton, we could just buy half a ton, right? Well, that like the uh, crystal. See, if well, already... normally you see that thing of the tonnage. You roll one d times five, say, or two d times ten. That's the lot it comes in, and mm -hmm. you have oh. to ship it all or nothing. I see. You okay. can't break it up. Yeah, for freight, uh, the cargo lots available are composed of. Uh, major cargo lots are 1D, 10, 1D6 times 10 tons. Minor are 1D6 times 5. Incidental are 1D6. To determine the number of cargo lots available, we roll 2D6 on the freight table three times, uh, once uh, each for incidental, minor, and major lots, and then we apply some modifiers. We got some... So why don't I, while you guys are talk, talking over this, why don't I roll that for you, and we'll tell you what's uh, what's available. I'll yeah. uh, say it's a 24. Advanced weapons. Mm. Uh, 34. Luxury consumables. No, no, that's really... I'm looking at the sale DMs that we might get. Mm -hmm. um, and we can see, and then 24 weapons again someone wants to sell these advanced weapons <laughs> yeah i don't know if we're i mean the crystal crystals and gems but not really yeah i don't know if the the speculative cargo for where we're headed does not seem very lucrative. I mean, for for, non, for a non-industrial receiving yeah. world, yeah, common, for non common manufactured goods is a pretty good. Yeah, common common manufactured goods is yeah. Oh yeah, we can get all the common stuff, right? Yep. 
Yeah. Yeah. So that's probably. Oh yeah, right. Because they don't have the same industry yeah, there. Cool. So just bringing them goods is yeah. is yeah. valuable. Or that even common industrial goods too, right? So it's plus three, plus three. Um, oh, yeah, you get plus three for that as well. Yeah, both those. Yeah. So. Yeah, so I think that that might be our best bet, and then the, like the common industrial goods are a thousand or ten thousand per lot. So. Yeah, so we can actually afford it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, so don't I don't know. I don't know. It's two D times ten tons, isn't it, for the lot? Yeah. Um, lot. And is that so the base good. price per ton? Yep. Okay. If it's... Oh, so it all depends on what kind of lots are available. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, if we're lucky, then we'll roll a three on 2d6. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. Might, it might even end up being freight, you know. Yep. Well, let's, I, I was looking at so common industrial, common manufactured, and then even. Um, so this one, then common consumables, at least for ice cap, gives a plus one too. And then, yeah. Those seem to be in our, maybe in our price range. Maybe. Okay. Maybe we should check for those. Kevin first, maybe see what the lots look like for industrial yep. goods, industrial goods, manufactured goods. I mean, if they're, if it's workable and it's in our price at our price point, you know, those seem to keep be potentially the most lucrative because they have a plus three on non-industrial. Yeah. Yeah. So let's see what lots they've got for those. And if we've got something at 50 tons or less. Mm -hmm. And we can afford. And we can afford it. <laughs> yeah. What do we get for freight? I mean, if we're close on price, you know, we might have a little extra money on our characters that we could chip in. I'm thinking that yeah. people yeah. didn't give up all their money to. No. no. So if we're really close, we can always make a decision. Okay, I have all your um, minor and major packages uh, set out here now too. How are we doing for speculative? We made a decision on uh, whether you're going to pick things up, how much you want to try and pick up. I'd be interested to roll to see what lots they have of manufactured common industrial goods. Okay, and common. How many times did that, so there's, there's one oh, no. for sure, and then uh, how many times did that come up uh, again, or did it come up again? What's your common? Well, I got common industrial at least once, so shall I roll 2d6? Uh, so we got common, yeah, what please size see. the lot is. Yep. You said common industrial you rolled? That's it. Okay. Yep, so that's 12, yep. So, fingers crossed, lads, five or less. <laughs> that's a lot. Oh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a lot of goods. Well, yes, that's a lot of those. You want to bring all no. this mining gear? <laughs> we have 11, uh, 110, 110 tons worth of mining gear. Yeah, we can't. Tr <laughs> trust me, I won't roll that when I shoot it anymore. But that is only <laughs> one. That, that is only the one. There is at least one other one. Because if you rolled that as um, a, a separate extra trade good why don't you give us another 2d6 roll uh james Let's oh see. i only rolled one sorry for that oh, okay 25 I? advanced vehicles seven 70 tons equally useless yeah, yeah. Oh, that, that so was for, sorry, uh, jeff was rolling not not the uh, size oh, of right it. sorry my bad yeah he was rolling. Yeah. so we still have yet to roll for the common industrial goods who feel who's feeling lucky who wants to roll 2d6 and roll five or less or well, lucky unlucky in this case would be good yeah <laughs> I can be quite unlucky in roll 20. Yeah, that's go true. On. Let's see if we can play your strength. All right, here we go. Jeff's yeah, famous superpower. die for rolling. <laughs> Come on. Oh, oh it's so close. No, that's good. That's good. That's exactly. Oh, no, we're, we need 50, right? Well, Sell yeah. That. 
If you want to keep your grav car. Oh. <laughs> but we've got the grav car is what, four tons? Four and we've tons. got 64 tons so cargo 69. space. Oh, so and that's 60 tons. Is it 64 yep. tons of space? 64, yeah. Yeah. Oh, so we, we're exactly full. Exactly. Okay. You see, oh, yeah, yeah. You can see it on the. Uh, Unless I, I can't read it quite clearly. It looks like 64 on the cargo. Oh, it could be. I actually didn't look. Um, let's see here. Oh, it's kind of tiny. I can have a look right? at my PDF. And cargo, see no, 64. There. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, amazing. So you can jam amazing. this thing full of mining supply. Mining. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All, All right, right so th that is definitely... Well, how, much money, how much money does that cost us, though? It's, it's, uh... Industrial, that'd be 60,000 you're investing in that cargo then. Oh yeah, that's nice. Sixty thousand. That's a that's a good. That's about a quarter. We can maybe get more. Well, uh, more. that's that's the base price. We now need to see if we can get a better price on that. Oh yeah, I yeah. am. So let's see here. Base price or, or, or worse, of course. Well, yeah. is it is it base price per ton? Yep. Yeah. 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 Oh, that, yeah. that might be six hundred thousand. Yeah. Yeah, we yeah. can't afford that. Uh, I honestly think freight for freight we can we can pull in eighty eighty k on freight uh, or, or, or mail if we, if we take any mail uh that's pretty good money for a low startup but a startup right we, we haven't got a lot of a lot of capital at the moment we and, unless we decide to, to wait, loan, wait, thought... loan some money from a, a large corporation I, I wouldn't want to give it straight our interest <laughs> rates will <laughs> literally kill you yeah <laughs> okay if i thought where we um so the base price is, I guess I'm missing. So it's sixty thousand, or you said six hundred thousand? I said sixty, yeah. but I, I lost a zero because I think the the purchase price. Yeah, if it's sixty tons and it's ten thousand per ton, it's oh, six hundred thousand. Yeah. Oh, ten thousand per ton. Shoot. Yeah, yeah. So we so we have a third of that. So unless and there's no way back. we can negotiate that heavy of a discount, it's uh, not possible. If you guys, <sighs> let's see here, if you guys manage to roll 25 or higher on the modified <laughs> roll, that would be 15% of the overall purchase price, which is 90000 So, No, it's not possible. I just wasn't sure how far the discounts well, were. Well, I mean, let's see here. Uh, what, what dice modifiers are there on the purchase side here? Uh, so this was a common industrial world, non-agricultural industrial. Yeah, so there's no modifiers, unfortunately, from here for purchase. Uh, Are we so, industrial or non-industrial? Uh, it doesn't have either of those things. I think it's, oh, okay, it's only yeah. when they, yeah, when they yeah, have it's only, it. It's rich water is what we're looking for, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, water world, you get plus two for biochemicals. So... Man, wood. Wood is, on, on an agricultural world, you get plus six to purchase wood. Wow. Can we get so much of it, I guess? Yeah. Well, let's, oh, I guess let's, let's, do the, let's just do the freight then. Freight, yeah. Okay. So then uh, freight cargoes are, I, I already, I, there are so many uh, major and minor and incidental cargoes and you only have 60 tons worth of space. You're going to be able to mix and match what you need for mm -hmm. it. I've rolled... 10d6 worth of uh, minor cargoes, each of which is 1d6 times 5. So we're going to assume that you're going to be able to mix and match. And I've got 11d6 worth of um, incidental cargo. So you got plenty of stuff you can do. Uh, you can pick up. Now, the so it can't be broken up, so but that's not an issue. Let's check the rate here. Um, you are traveling two parsecs to Argona. Uh, yep. If you're doing 60 tons, that's 16, uh, 1,600 times uh, 60, whatever that is. 96? 96,000 credits? Is that right? I'm just doing it. Sorry, 1,600 uh, 60 times, times 60. 1,600. 96,000. Yeah. 96,000, yeah. Did I say 9,600? Yeah, again. Yeah, those missing zeros are critical. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a reason I'm a lawyer, not an accountant. Um. Let's see here. How much space does uh, mail take up? Mail takes up five tons of space, and you'll pay 25,000 credits for transporting the container. Do you want to try and get mail? Well worth it if we can. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So let's, let's check for that first. Uh, mail is, to determine if there's mail available, roll 2d6, 
and then apply the modifiers from the mail table. So freight, oh, okay, the freight traffic dice modifier. Let's see here. Uh, okay, here we go. So the modifiers, it's from a, what's the population of uh, Argona? Uh, eesh, okay, not high. Uh, but we apply from each, it's plus four from here because the population is big, minus four. So it's actually no modifier for the um, population. Yeah. Starport mm -hmm. is B from here is plus one uh, and Oh, for both source and destination. And I think it's a B at Argona as well. Yeah, B at Argona, so plus two. Um, no modifier for tech levels. Yeah, no modifier for tech levels. Neither high nor low. So guys, uh, it's a 2D6. Um, I think I get to add my naval rank, don't I? Yes. Highest naval or scout rank. Yeah, yeah, highest naval or scout rank. What's your highest naval or scout rank? What's your highest social dice modifier? I think Dr. Yes. Uh, Abdel, you might be the highest social, aren't you? But is Alonzo higher? Oh, wait, or is Alonzo? Uh, my social is 10. Yeah, mine, mine is 8. Okay, so what, and what, dice modifier from 10 is what? Uh, Plus 1. Plus one. one, okay. So you plus one from that. And what's the highest that, naval rank amongst ever, or naval or scout rank amongst everyone? I got a rank four. All right. Okay. So that's I'm, I'm Marines, so I don't count. Uh, <laughs> that's funny that you don't count in it because you really, you know, uh, <laughs> it's two d six plus five. Then it looks like. Yep. Who wants so to roll what that? do you want to roll? Uh, 2d6 plus uh, eight or uh, 12 or more, you're chosen to transport the mail. Oh, wow. Wow. All right. So we have. Well, that's the exact average, actually. It is. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, for us. Who's feeling average? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I guess I could roll since I have the highest okay. naval rank here. Yeah, do it. Mm -hmm. Go for it. Yeah. Let's do see. it, Hank. Come on. So we don't get anything. Um, we don't get anything for Starport, right? It just uh, uh, that's already so factored into that good. bonus. Yeah, yeah okay. not for the mail. It's factored into the uh, the mod another modifier we determined. Yeah. There you go. Woo! Woo! Nice. Woo! Okay, so yeah, the then you guys nice. are uh, for your five tons of mail. So that'll be when you nice. reach Argona, it'll be twenty five thousand credits. Mm. And then if you're filling up the rest with cargo. Uh, that will be um, 59. Well, actually, it says that there will be 1D containers available to transport, and we must take them all. Oh, so yeah. <laughs> 1D <laughs> uh, Fortunately, you have enough room for everything. So yeah. <laughs> uh, who, whoever caught that, I think it was uh, Graham, give us a 1D6 roll. Yeah. Okay. Nice. All right. Let's, let's try it. Come on. on. Yeah, it could be. It's very lucrative. It could be, couldn't it? Uh, 1D. Three. Okay, Three. 15 Three. tons. That's 15 Three. tons. Okay, 15 so tons. that's 49 tons of uh, regular cargo, of freight. Actually, 15, no, 45, 45. 45 our, tons. Yeah, our air raft. Oh, our yeah, air, air raft. raft, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. So 45 um, so tons nice. worth of uh, uh, freight, so whatever 45 times uh, 1,600 is. And as we've learned, I cannot be trusted to do that math. <laughs> so, <laughs> you guys will be jump. short. 72,000. Pretty, okay. Nice. All right, so, Close. and nice thing, yeah. you've invested yeah. none of your own money into this, guys. Yep. Into the mail part. The mail part. That, right, that's just the delivery. Three times 25,000. Or the freight. We're all delivering freight, or the freight. We're just freight delivering. doesn't cost you anything. It's only when you do speculative oh, trade that we're just uh, hauling. Yeah. 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 We're paid to to just take it. Yeah, we're paid to take to haul it. Yeah, okay. which is good because then we we develop like a, a bank and then then yep. we do speculative cargo and then we make millions. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> and then we get those guns. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for the train to reach that stop. <laughs> All right. Then the last thing is, and, I, I guess you could and, you still could take on passengers as well. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. You want to take on some passengers? I think so. Yes, yeah, let's maximize this. 
so let's see how many. Okay, so our uh, let's see. Could, I, could I just ask? Does anyone have steward? Nope. Oh, wasn't that one was in our thing? Wasn't that was it? someone's got one in steward. Yeah. Can we just check because we ain't, we're only taking. Oh, 11. I do. Yeah. <laughs> Great. <laughs> that time, Excellent. Yeah. That's fine. Carry on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Have, yeah. So Alonzo, Alonzo's going to say we're going to all have like a writing workshop. Well, yeah. Yeah. Jump. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, let's see here. So, we got one from the task one. Read my first novel from the shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Available at a gift shop. A lot of free yeah. editors. A lot of free editors there. Proposed <laughs> destination. Uh, no, I have one published novel. I did have one successful uh, book. Just four. What Are you looking called? for high passengers or... I don't know if to think of that. Higher, so is it luxury passengers, middle passengers, standard class, or um, low passage, or basic passage? It's got to be basic because we don't have room to, for all their crap. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you don't have a stateroom. That's right. Never mind. Never mind. This is... Uh, okay, so... And, uh, and we have low berth. Yes. Uh, and we have a we have a position so too. We're going to so roll separately good. for low passengers and for basic passage. Then, uh, so okay. we got four. I'm just uh, calculating the, the dice modifier for you here. Um, five, six, uh, minus one. So that's five. All right. So um, it is going to be a broker, carouse, or streetwise check at a uh, with plus five for uh, basic passengers and plus six for low passengers. So a uh, broker, carouse, or streetwise. Who is feeling up to that I task? I carouse at two and streetwise at two. Is that with your modifier in as well? Yeah, that's my total. Yep. So I'm the same with broker, so it doesn't really matter. Where. Yeah. Well, why don't you do one and I'll do one? Okay. okay. So do you who wants to do for basic? I guess the the low passage will be unconscious the entire trip. So why don't we have Alonzo give us a um, one with plus five and uh, Captain Ganny with a plus six. Okay. Carouse, five, go. Oh, hold on. I'm doing this wrong. But I can fix it with this, with what we've rolled here. All right, so hold on. First off, uh, we take the effect here. So I'm going to back up that five. You rolled an eight uh, on yours. This is adds another modifier. Your dice roll adds a modifier to the roll for available passengers. So, oh, okay. Okay, so, but that's good. I mean, an eight is, is so good, and a six, that's a ten. What's your, Ganny, what, your, what's your uh, modifier for broker? Plus one? Plus two. Plus two, okay. Uh, so that is a twelve, an effect of four. So for low passengers, uh, now it is, oh gosh, uh, Captain Ganny, give us a 2d4 plus 10. And uh, Alonzo, 2d, uh, sorry, 2d6 plus 10. Uh, Alonzo, 2d6 plus 5, please. Holy smokes. Uh, so Alonzo, yeah, we have five D six worth of, uh, basic passengers and wow. we have five D six worth of low. So you guys are, we can fill it up. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I mean, we have seen what dice can do. So let's have, uh, well, we've, only got, uh, we've only we got, have... uh, with six D six, we should get six, right? Uh, with, uh, each of those is five D six. Yeah, it's five. So, which one pays us more, the basic? Well, you can or... do both, right? Yeah, both. Yeah, you can roll both. Uh, you, you, you need uh, like there are different uh, areas. So, um, just basically, why don't you each oh. roll five d six? Just don't roll a five. Actually, if at five. You're with basic. You're good. You've already got your basic passengers. So just your low berth. Just roll five d six for low berth. Okay. Which would be Captain Ganny. Yeah. Okay, so there's a lot of people who are willing to travel <laughs> effectively in like something worse than a pet carrier. Uh, so, what that means is, let's see here, two parsecs worth. Uh, so you got uh, two parsecs 
six traveling at 1300 uh, for the passage and five at 3000 for the passage. So it is going to be a full ship going, guys. Yeah. All right. So with your cargo hold full, with a pro- this prospect of uh, four months of work ahead of you, uh, and a uh, a trip off of this uh, planet, and who a chance to visit a barren, <laughs> lifeless ice moon that has industrial <laughs> problems. <laughs> so. I'm sure there'll be no problems. And any reports of uh, ice worms, I guarantee you, are just nothing but Jitico slander against the local populate, the local corporation. Those hmm. reports are just fake news from Jitico. Jitico, you really shouldn't go to Argona. Um, so then, guys, that brings our first proper session to a close. We'll kick off next yeah. uh, week with, or, ne- or two weeks from now, with you guys actually traveling off planet and uh, doing your astrogation and seeing if any. Yep. Thing goes awry there. Um, I will have read up on the space combat rules by that point, so then I can feel free to <laughs> not accidentally kill you with uh, something. So, all right. So then, for those listening at home, thank you so much for joining us. Let me move us to our main page here for our first proper session of the Borderlands, the Borderland Run. Uh, as is always the case, uh, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns regarding the session, the campaign, or the game we're playing, please don't hesitate to leave a comment in the comment section down below, and I'll endeavor to reply in a timely fashion. You can also find us on the Dungeon Musings Discord server. There's a uh, link to that attached down below. One thing I will say, for those who might be joining us for the first time with Traveler, um, and because I had to remove some of these uh, from the last time, um, we're playing this for the first time in, in quite some time. Comments were the extent of it is only to try and correct on like rules or things like that. It has nothing to the conversation, uh, particularly when it comes after the fact. So we're not going to go back and change things. We're not going to be like, you know, especially for character creation, we're not going to be creating new characters right away. So I, I would ask you to either consider whether you're adding anything substantive to the conversation about the, the uh, game or anything else, or if you're nitpicking rules. If it's the latter, we don't really care. We're not going to pay attention to it. I'm probably going to delete the comment. So just, you know, if, if there's stuff you want to share about uh, Traveler in general or, you know, anything about the session, we love hearing from that. Nitpicking on rules, particularly when it comes months after the fact, does nothing to help either us or anyone else who's playing or watching or trying to learn Traveler. So, um, uh, there's also uh, a link down below to, or I should say on the Dungeon Musings Discord server, there's also tons of, of uh, channels uh, dedicated to the other games we run on the channel, as well as a bunch of other great channels like Finding a Group, like um, discussing different games, setting up virtual tabletops and making your choices between them, information about uh, conventions, lots of great stuff. A terrific community has built up over there, and you are more than welcome to join those folks as well. Uh, I know there's a lot of Traveler fans over there. Um, there's also a link down below to something called Heroes Save Villages. That is the charity fundraising campaign that we run on the channel, which benefits the SOS Children's Villages International Charity, a really amazing organization active in over 130 countries, benefiting over 80,000 orphaned and abandoned children, including ongoing relief efforts at the time of recording in Ukraine and the surrounding countries. All donations through that link go directly to SOS Children's Villages International. and go, um, None of it goes to the channel or any other middleman. It just goes to benefit the uh, kids who benefit from their services. And as a um, small way of saying thank you, if you donate $10 or more and have done so since January 1st, 2023, you will have a chance to vote on our... Uh, well, you have last chances today to vote on our first charity session, but our next two sessions of our year-long charity campaign the year of ill omens, you will have an opportunity to help vote and shape what that game is going to be. We have had a really interesting game right now set up of occultic uh, treasure hunters set in the age of piracy that we will be playing, it seems like, with amazing adventures, the modern day or pulp equivalent of uh, castles and crusades that we have been playing in our Night Below campaign uh, for quite some time now. Um, but after this, we'll be having other games that you'll be able to vote on, other time periods, other selections of heroes. So if you have donated $10 or more to the Hero Save Villages campaign since January 1, 2023, be sure to head on over to the Charity Initiatives channel on the Dungeon Musings Discord server. <laughs> Sundays, she is so, so active. Um, you uh, can cast your vote uh, for to help shape that campaign. And we'll be having opportunities as well to shape what's happening between the different sessions because they are all connected in some grand red thread on a wall kind of way. Um, there is also, uh, if you donate $25 or more, uh, then every $25 Canadian that you donate gives you one chance to win the grand prize or one of the other great prizes in our next charity raffle. 
Next charity raffle will be at the end of June 2023, and one of the prizes we'll have on offer, in addition to the cool gaming stuff and stuff from the Dungeon Musings Red Bubble Shop that we'll have available, will be an opportunity to play with us. Um, I'll be uh, running a game. It won't be streamed, but it um, will be recorded, and you'll be playing with some of the... Not only will I write something uh, especially for whoever the winner is, I will also... Um, um, well, you'll be playing with some of the uh, roster players as well. And then, what on earth? There's not even anything outside. I don't know what she's yelling at. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, it's because she saw some at some point, and there still might be down the block somewhere. Um, in addition, um, the... Um, so you get to win some uh, get cool gaming stuff, an opportunity to play with us, and you will have a recording. Even though we won't stream it, we'll have a recording of it, so you'll be able to uh, to uh, view that uh, for as long as YouTube is a thing. Uh, and uh, you will um, help out some kids who uh, really could benefit from their uh, from the services of SOS Children's Villages International. There's also a link down below to our friends at Noble Knight Games. Noble Knight Games is the preeminent unionized uh, retailer of hard-to-find and out-of-print RPGs in North America. Not only do they have an amazing selection of new role-playing games, board games, and card games, they also have an unmatched selection of hard-to-find and out-of-print RPGs, including... Um, I mean, a lot of things that I filled. I filled in a couple of holes in my Traveler First Edition Mongoose uh, uh, collection using uh, their services. If they don't have in stock what you're looking for, you can often put it on a want list and they will let you know when it comes in. And if you purchase $10 or more through their website, be sure to enter the code, the Muse at checkout and you will save yourself 10%. And if you're listening to this at a later date, uh, be sure to um, check back on the more recent video because the uh, Noble Knight changes the code about every four or five months. So um, the last thing I will say is a huge thank you to our stalwart travelers. We did have a rocky start with uh, trying to get all the cameras working, but honestly, I forgot about that within about 20 minutes. So Jeffrey, uh, David, Carl, Graham, and James, thank you so much for playing today, guys. I had so much fun running this today. Can't believe I, I had to duck out because I wanted to power on through, but my old man bladder disagreed with me. So I will make sure we have our mid-session break next time <laughs> or anyone else who is suffering from any biological needs for it. So uh, with that, we'll be back in the Trojan Reach uh, in uh, two weeks' time. But until then, we hope that we gave you a couple of hours to take your mind off of the troubles of our world and think about the, tr the troubles that the crew of the Rift Wanderer are Hope getting themselves get into. into. And <laughs> until we see you again, Got stay to. safe, stay healthy, and happy gaming. <laughs>